Fly without boarding pass Couldn't catch me, I'll be moving fast Call me a shooting star Let me know you are Flying up in a bar Wish on a star Time to show them who's in charge Call me a shooting star Big in a game like she went and got them breast implants I said I'm moving too fast Didn't even get a glance I'm ready to eat up track like I'm seated in a restaurant yeah. If you have swag like mine You know it's best to flaunt yeah. We aren't Hating because you aren't Shining like it's neon Drop like it's a neon Shooting stars across the galaxy I stand out so don't be mad at me Infiltrate and wear my strategy Yeah, 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 shoot, 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 yeah, 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 shoot, 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 yeah, 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 shoot, 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 What's happening, people? Welcome to Tottenham Away, the best place to be on a Monday night. That's right. If you're not a Spurs fan, welcome as well. You're always welcome to our channel. We have finally done it. We've taken advantage of Aston Villa's slip up and we take that fourth spot with a game in hand. It's all looking good for Spurs, for the race for top four in Champions League football, if that's your thing. Um, good. <laughs> If that's your are... thing, if that's your thing, it clearly ain't for you. Uh, I try... <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <Is> that... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was yeah, funny. Yeah. If that's your thing, that made me laugh. Sorry, sorry, man. I stopped your flow. My bad. I had to slip that in. I just had to drop that. Do you know what? Big up to Ospur. Uh, they've got the funniest captions. This cracked me up. I knew <laughs> I would eventually make you proud. <laughs> this killed me. This killed me, I tell you. No need, <laughs> Big up man. Tottenham Ospur. Big up Tottenham Ospur. They, 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 they come out with the funniest stuff, honestly. I'd love I'd love to get them on the show one day. I reckon they'll be a good laugh. 
Uh, I've been a geek. I've been, been all right. Yeah, all right, all right. Good win, good win. Uh, obviously, a uh, good win on on the weekend. Three points. Um, mm-hmm. It may not mean a lot to many people, but to some, it does mean we climb, we surpass, we surpass Aston Villa to fourth place. But it, 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 you know, you know, now it, it's in our hands. Although there's a lot of games, big games coming up, and that I got a feeling it's not just the top three, but the European places, the relegation battles. Um, there's it's going to be it's going to be a lot of changing over between now and the end of the season. So um, it's good that we 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 we've got control now, but that can change at any given time. And we got to go to Newcastle next week. Um, obviously, Aston Villa have got Arsenal. Right, right. So I'll stop there. Right, we've got the Newcastle tickets. They came today. I mentioned Put it this away. morning. To to this is top away. of Tottenham away because it's the first Perfect. time I think that you know three of us are going to be together for a game. I, I don't think it's happened. Like away. actually travelled a proper yeah. way away as well. We proper kind of away. We couldn't have picked the first. And it, what's further than Newcastle? I mean, it's, what's further than that? Yeah, shit. In Scotland. the Premier League. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's the Premier League. That's the furthest trip. Newcastle, that yeah. is proper Tottenham away as it gets. And um, we gonna we 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 gonna. I wasn't it. I wasn't originally planning on going. I remember when we was discussing it with Ryan a few weeks ago. I wasn't. I was. I'm an and I was like, nah, I'm going too far. And then all of a sudden, last minute, I thought, you know what? If this is gonna be like a Tottenham away away sort of day, then I have to be. I, I want. I want to be there for the for our first one. Let's hope it's a good one. And of course, I was saying Arsenal have got Aston Villa, so. That top four, if we do get a result at Newcastle and Arsenal, as as I feel, will be Aston Villa at home. That that could be a real that could be a real game changer for those who are, who care enough about top four. <laughs> I'm not for yourself, but for those who do care, it could be massive. I never, I never said I never said if you care. I said if that's your thing. If that's your well, if that <laughs> tomato tomato. <laughs> Tomato, okay, tomato. Okay, okay, it's just do, not my thing. Do you care still if we make top four or not? It's just not my thing. There you go. Point my point exactly. Tomato, tomato, same thing. <laughs> oh my lord. Right. Big, big up, up everyone in the chat, guys. Big up. Big up to Tony, Eugene, LA007. I'm just gonna call you BG because I can never pronounce your name. Big up to BG. Uh, Svarog BG. Svarog. Svarog BG. Um Adrian in house. Got got a butterfly, Robert Wilson, Alex got Scott experience. Rob's in the house. <clears throat> Tom, Alex Scott Mateta experience. Out. Nice Why every, is this got Mateta out, man? They're on the verge of winning the league, or potentially can win the league, and my man still hasn't <laughs> changed. It's still Arteta out. Anthony, talk to me. Maybe he'll change. Pick up, it. everyone. Ten inch in the house. King ding a ling. Ding ding. Big up, Sibley. Three double S Sports Language Angels. Jason. Big up, big up, big up Graham. Big up, big up, Asper, up in a coma. Yes. Andy in the house. Sammy Dio. Up, Andy. So I'll, Chris, I'll listen. I'll mention all the names. <laughs> Sammy, big up, double D. Sammy, never always another here. Guna, another Guna. Zaffa, another Guna. Spurs 72. Big up, big up. I see him on Twitter uh, or X. Coles, big up, big up, my man. Yeah, Shraf. Uh, Eugene. We're not driving. We are getting the train to Newcastle. The train. Oh, hell it's no. Driving. Driving. Driving, driving up is fun. There and back. The driver, the driver, the driver the, and it's always me driving, so I prefer to get the train. Nah, do you know what? We're going to have a drink as well. We're going to have a drink, so... It's, it's, it's about Eugene. It's about how long is it? About six hours, seven hour drive. To drive is about five and a half, six hours. Yeah, yeah, five and a half, six hours there, Eugene. Six hours back. That's twelve plus two, three hours for the game. That's a long day, man. If you're the driving, train, the train's three hours there. Three yeah, hours. There. Train is it's much much quicker and more more enjoyable. Big up JJ. Big up Dunzel Dork. Wayne Holland. Ray the Yid. Big up, guys. Sahara River. I think that's the correct I will name. take Aston Villa win against Arsenal every day. Oh, you want Aston Villa? <laughs> Top four. Okay. <laughs> I think you're in line with how Stell feels about it then. Matt Big Coppin. up, Matt. Big up, everyone. How are you, how are you coping? 
That's what we say to him. How are you coping? Matt, how are you coping? Very good. Uh... Hey, user. Friend Lamb, big up. Daniela's in the house. We've got Mark. We've got Joe Red. How you doing? Still, I don't agree with everything you say. We have had a... We, we have even had a negative back and forth, but I love the content. Big uh, up. Nice one, Joe. Big up, Joe. It's always uh, nice, you know, what people say. I don't always agree with you, but I do love, you know, your, your take on it. And I do love to hear what you got to think about it, even though it's not good. That, that's fine. More, you know, it's always, it's, it's, all, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, it's it's, like, up, it's, a, it's but, only football, Spurs, isn't it? At the end of the day, opinion divide, but we all have the same passion. Oh. JJ in the house. Um, big up Charlie Sp oh if you don't know who this is everyone I saw him yesterday I saw, I saw I saw I saw a little bit of him yesterday yeah, people, people that haven't seen the show yesterday this boy is 16 years old and he big voice for a 16 year old he spoke to the mind. most adults that we have to deal with I'm telling you he's gonna be big up Charlie I followed you I followed on yesterday I did watch the show uh, he had really good valid points uh, particularly Charlie's, with, with Charlie's going to come on the through. Friday show this week. Charlie's yeah, gonna come on, Charlie. Uh, John, is it Johnson? He was, he was he was advocate for Johnson, but he, he made some good points in him. So big up, big up, what, mate. What kind of a name is this? Basic monster. <laughs> big up to you. <laughs> big up, Mark's big up, house, Philly, Philly in NYC. Big up to you. Sab Philly, Philly, New Liberals, York. Naradov. Big up to all of you guys. Guys, we've got 170, almost 200 people watching already. Smash the like, subscribe, um, and let's get going. Uh, before we begin, we've got to quickly mention, uh, we did mention it yesterday, but RIP, Joe Kinnear. Joe um, Kinnear. those of you that don't know, Joe Kinnear, he won four trophies with Spurs, FA Cups, League Cups, uh, which is now called the Carabao Cup, and a European Cup as well. Joe is a legend. Some say he's one of the best right backs we've ever had. He also managed Wimbledon. Uh, but for Spurs, he is a legend. And you know, he he for me, he for me, Iggy is 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 a dying breed of players that actually represented Tottenham when we were a proper football club, when we were genuinely a team that won trophies, we were <clears throat> built, we were geared up, the ambition was about silverware, not so much money profit hotels and all this stuff but for you what what do you kind of recall for joe kinnear because you're, you're you're a little bit older than me not much but i don't listen i don't remember him um a lot as a player but you know his record speaks for himself as a good right back i heard what adrian I, did, I heard what adrian had to say about him um on the sunday night show i watched it this morning as for those that I wake up ridiculous hours in the morning to go work, so I can't always stay up late, late. But I do catch up with, uh, I try to catch up with as much as show as possible. When I heard him, what he had to say, Adrian had to say about um, Joe Kinnear, and it's in, you know, it's an impression of it. It's, it's, it's really like, you know, fair dues to him as a player. And like you said, a club that from the top all the way to the bottom breathed. Um, perhaps not so much in the respects of the league, but we was always known as a cup team, weren't we? So in Europe, we held our own as well. And he was part of that. My memories of him was probably more his managerial side. He was manager of the crazy gang, Wimbledon. That's how I remember him and how he managed his teams and, and, and the team that he had together there. And they were very difficult to play against the crazy gang. He's... Um, the team he managed for so many years. It felt like he managed them for years. Um, so that's what I remember more so um, uh, as a kid, uh, as a teenager growing up. But you know what? Those who fought for the shirt, succeeded with the shirt, won trophies, they may be gone from reserve, but they'll never, ever be forgotten by, by the fans even more so for those who breathed that era of that time and 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 enjoyed their success with uh, joking it. So yeah, condolences to his family, and yeah, may may rest in eternal peace. Yeah, one hundred percent. R.I.P. to joking here. Another legend gone. Um, but times are different now. We are a different type of club, and there was a game completely. It was played yesterday. 
Look, I'll, I'll go for it quickly because we did do a show on it um, yesterday. But the starting lineup, the only difference was Basuma kept his place. Saar came in for Benton Core and um, Kulu stayed on the bench as Johnson and Werner started. Now, the subs were a so. Uh, Pape Saar, Madison, Timo Werner, Basuma, and Johnson all came off. Uh, Johnson only came off towards right at the end. Dane Scarlett got basically a run out for five minutes. But the halftime changes, the big ones were Saar and Basuma off, Benton Korn Hoibye on. People say that changed the game. And then with 15 minutes to go, um, Madison and Werner got pulled off. Now, I know we won 3 1 um, and probably deserved it. But again, again. Forrest has some big, big chances. And a better forward puts him in the back of the net. There was a good period in the first half where they were all over us. And we, we've we got this issue, issue, Iggy, where we either go 1-0 down and we wake up at some point in the game. Or we go 1-0 up and you're thinking, right, put your foot on the gas. And instead, we let the other team back in. And we've done it a lot this season. What, why why can't we just start a game well and keep it going? And why does it sometimes take us to go down a goal and a, and a whole half before we get going? Because last season, I remember everyone was saying, under Conte, we only play one half good. And then there was that joke, Tottenham half spur. Yeah, we were called Tottenham half spur. Yeah, yeah, I remember. What, what is the difference this year? We're the same team. We're the same thing. We're we're a one half team again. Ma, listen. I don't think it's a physical thing. I think it's a psychological. Um, it's, it's just the way we we tend to approach game. But for me, still don't know about you, man. But I see a lot of similarities of the teams that come to Spurs. They're very much uh, low block, sit back, everyone behind the ball. You know, take advantages of perhaps a mishit pass from Spurs whilst they're in possession and then trying to ca- catch them on a counter-attack. I've seen a lot of that. I've seen, seen a lot of that. What our issue is that we don't... We're sometimes in moving the ball about, trying to trying to get um, the opposition uh, to move, you know, from, from, from that, from that you know, 11, 10 men behind the ball. In doing so, sometimes we do mess up the pass. We do try to um, force situations that don't need to be forced, and then that's when we we often get caught in a break. And we, as you know, we're very high up, uh, high up the pitch, and it happens. We we haven't quite worked out a way that when we do lose a ball, are we set up to deal with the counter? Are we set up to deal with any potential um, counters? That we could um, we could receive whilst in possession of the ball. So um, it's it's a weird one for me because, like I said, how you know it's very very difficult when a team doesn't come toe to toe. You know they're all approaching us in the same way successfully because obviously if you look at it from Nottingham Forest's <coughs> point of view, if you look at the, pre- the, the, the previous teams that have come to Spurs. Uh, the Luton, the Wolves and all of that. It's a successful way of approaching Spurs coming to the lane because you know you can get in and behind. Um, so we need to... That's the part I feel that we need to deal with. The, with, with, with Particularly in the first half. And also, you don't... Even if you don't score straight away, we don't always have to concede soft goals. And for me, the soft goals... Are something that we is happening way, way too, too many times, and I, something that I feel that's the part that's that's not quite there yet. Um, how we overcome that, I, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure how we overcome that because we need to break teams down. Essentially, that's what it comes down to. The first 45 minutes is trying to break teams down whilst not conceding at the same time. Once they get the goal. Then, then of course you start getting the, the crowd. The crowd starts getting going. Something. I, I, another thing as well. The crowd. They weren't quite there. They're not. They weren't as noisy as they normally are at the lane. Um, the big. I, I've really noticed that this time around against Forest. So maybe they 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 need to play a little bit more part to put pressure 
on the opposition and really push us on. Um, so there's an element of that in the first half. But once the goal, once we could see that guy against Wood, all of a sudden, like we react to it. The the reason the crowd is the way it is is because they're all lying to themselves. That entire stadium is a lie, right? What do you mean by they that? They are tricking. <laughs> well. I sold my ticket for Crystal Palace. I ended up going because my mate gave me his ticket to take his son. He said, no one to baby his son. I said, all right, I'll help you out. I sold my ticket for Luton. I sold my ticket for Nottingham Forest. I'm going to the Arsenal game because it's a North London derby. I know there's going to be fire. But I sold my tickets because I sat there about three, four weeks ago and I said, this is crap. Like, I'm genuinely bored. I'm sitting here waiting, waiting for like a 15, 20-minute spell where... We look decent, we create chances, but for probably 65, 70 minutes of the game, I'm sitting here just like that. And the whole stadium feels the same way, right? The reason I say it's a lie is because they say that we're playing great football and that some people said this is the best football they've seen in their lives. You know, what what what, what planet are these people on? We are not playing good football. No, we're, 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 still, great still, football. we're still at West. Every time, the, every time a team attacks us, every time a team attacks us, you're literally sitting yeah. there going, oh, shit. Every time we attack and a team drops deep, you're watching the ball go that way, that way, that way, that way. And when we do go forward, it's just blam it as hard as you can into the box and hope it connects. It, it's, it's, I'm, not, I'm not trying to disrespect us because I think there's times when we do play out from the back quickly, and I mean quickly, and we break through the lines, we look quite tasty. We look like a team that can do business. But that's like, you might see that two or three times in a whole game. In general, it's boring. Like, going to Spurs is boring. It's not an exciting, wonderful event um, at the moment. The first 10 games was buzzing. Maybe because it was new, it was different. We were winning every week. We were top of the table. We are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But since reality kicked in, right now we've got to rotate players because of injury. Now we've got to change players because they're not performing. It's not great football. It's not brilliant. And I think it's been way overhyped by the media. I think it's been overhyped by fans. If fans were that excited, it wouldn't be quiet in that stadium. Fact. The reason it's quiet is because they're bored. But that's my view. But what what do you not feel though? When you're when you're going to watch a game of football. And whilst you want to, you know, you want to look at your own team and what they're doing, how they play, how we attack, how we defend. And there is plenty to discuss in how we do that, for sure. Definitely how we attack teams and definitely for sure, and I'm sure we'll touch upon it tonight, how particularly in in Wood's goal, um, we can talk about that. And we will. But do you not feel like the opposition as well? you have to look at the opposition and say, what are they bringing? What are they bringing? They don't, they're not coming with this expansive football and, uh, you know, trying to attack us, trying to play open football, trying to, you, you need, what I'm trying to say still, you need two teams essentially to make it a good game. Right, let me you ask you a question. If you've got right, an attack me, okay, versus let, defense let, situation. Let, let, let me ask you a question. I'm saying that whilst, I, whilst I'm, I'm all forget, for. You forget the team, right? No, no, whilst the I'm team. all for critiquing. Spurs, I'm mm. all for critiquing it in the right way. Mm. And uh, if it's done in a rational critiquing, no problem with that. But I also have to say, I've not been impressed with a lot of teams that have come down. A lot of the teams this year that I've seen at Water uh, Lane uh, uh, have been sit back, 10 men behind the ball, right out, you know, see blah, 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 and then try. They're going to come up with their full backs. They're going to leave their two centre backs on their own. We can right, try okay. and hit them uh, channels. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, that's so, how they're all setting up. They're all setting up the same way. Because they're smart. They're smart. They're that. I'm not conducting. Okay. Listen, there's nothing wrong with our team set up. I'm saying me, to get. Me, let, you're talking about your board. You're sitting there. You're bored watching the game of football. But of course, yeah. you have to have two teams going at it. Otherwise, it that does get. It becomes. But Man a City. Strategy. No, 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 not Man really, City is a different. No, no, but no, but no, but no, but hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'll use your example. <clears throat> I watched Man City versus Man United at the Etihad a couple of weeks ago. Man City won. I think two one three one three one. Man United stuck everyone behind the ball for 90 minutes and they had like two or three really good counter-attacks. The same as what these teams do when they what come about to Man, us, Man right? City Arsenal? What was that all about? Wait, We're wait, expecting wait, but, but, but hold on, but hold on. Hear me out. 
But was I bored watching Man City go at Man United? No. I was wowed. I was entertained because they had a variety in their attack. They had a variety in the kind of goals they can score. Spurs, when a team sits back and says, come on then, Tottenham, I'm bored shitless because <laughs> I know we don't know what to do. Like, if you just put the team to one side, if you just look at the players, right now, there's Brennan Johnson, Timo Werner, Kulazewski. I'm going to put Madison in there as well, and maybe even Son. Do any of those players get you on the edge of your seat, like Foden does, like Mohamed Salah does, like um, I'd even say maybe Asaka? Do any do any of our players in the attacking lineup? Like, oh God! Oh, I wonder what he's going to do. Oh, I, I sit there, and none of them. The only one that used to do it for me was Madison and Son. Those two always got me excited. Even they've kind of just there. Yeah. But when the ball goes wide, I don't think Timo Werner is going to produce a magical bit of skill, a nutmeg, a rainbow flick. He's going to curl one top bins. And the same with Brennan Johnson. I, I literally see nothing. Even Kulu, right? I, I think as a team, we're not exciting. Unless you like the drama, the big open gaps and... And uh, these random moments, like a Van der Ven uh, long-range drill into the top bins or when Pedro Porro smashed one from distance in the FA Cup against Burnley, except these random moments in general. Individual think, moments. We, that's what we're lacking in our team. Individual moments. We don't moments. have it. That, but we even as a team. Individual moments. It, it, even, even as a team, for 45 minutes to 65 minutes, I don't think we're good. I don't. I don't think we're good. But fair enough, it's Angie's first season. It's going to take time. We need more players. I get all that. But it's the hype fans have put on it. Like, Chris Chris Catlin said, yesterday's second half was the best football he's seen since Poch. Is he actually on medication? Like, does he, does he just inject it? Uh, listen, I, it's crazy. I it's a wild comment. I'll, I can't I can't buy into comments like that. I think it's insane. But what, what you're doing is you're planting seeds in the fans' heads. Fans think, oh, yeah, we're brilliant. Then you go there and then you've got this conflict because you're sitting there and you're thinking, but I thought we were brilliant, but there's nothing on the pitch to make me actually believe what I thought I came here to see. And, I, and, and that is why the stadium atmosphere isn't quite there. It's because fans aren't entertained. They're tricking themselves. It's a lie. It's I a wouldn't <laughs> go as far as saying that's the best second half I've seen Spochettino. We're not, we're not, we're not, not, we're not near, we're not, close. we're not, we're not at that level. Close. We're not at the level of the Pochettino best team because, one, we haven't got those players. We haven't got... like I'm talking about as in the squad is nowhere near to that to that level of the Pochettino one was. And I just don't think we have the fluidity yet in our play. Uh, we had strong... We had, you know, we had, we had strong defence, a, a solid midfield, a creative one as well. And also we had really good, powerful... Uh, wingers were wide, and of course we had Harry up top. So I don't think we're anywhere near um, that. Uh, listen, I, I do feel like it's a very much um, progress, and I don't feel we're going to get a real, real. I want to say next season, like you know, it, we, we seem to come that we can we see, we, we come we come a little bit stuck when against teams that play behind the ball and of course we have these defensive frailties where we get caught up the top and some people call it suicide or uh, to, to a point um you know defensive naivety and i and listen i can i'll take that all on board i'm not disagreeing with any of it uh, there's definitely stuff that we need to we need to tweak um and I, we won't see that those things a little bit uh change until next season but the quality of the players have to massively improve as well um i know you mentioned brennan johnson and 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 timo Werner, um and you know and, and i think the comparison still i have to say this the comparisons to those teams uh, 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 i understand why you use the examples because you want to, you're striving to get our team to push to get so is Ange. so is Ange. since Ange, Ange said i don't care in top four i don't care about top four i want you know he wants the big stuff. So he, the manager thinks like me. Words. 
I'm, well, listen, yeah. I've heard, I've heard, listen, I'm not, I'm not, listen. We can, we can only go I by what you said, right? Yeah, of course. I, 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 I'd love, listen, I love, if, if Ange, if this is what, I'm not, I'm not saying that Ange doesn't believe in what he's saying. I'm not saying I'm not believing what he's saying. I need to see it, not just from Ange though, because we've seen managers that come there and they've had the genuine intention of what they want to do. But then we need to see you know, that same ambition amongst everyone at the club. Everybody at the club. Without that, we can't. You know, we, we, we can buy into what Ange is saying and we can even believe what he's saying. But uh, fundamentally, it's not just gonna t- it's not gonna it's just gonna it's not gonna be just Ange that's gonna decide um what happens at this club. If he wants to compete for the top top honours, he he needs to have everyone on board. And I'm not just talking about the fans. I'm not talking about the players. I'm talking about everyone. I think the fans else. are on board. I think I think the fans. Of course, are. well, we love it. The thing is, deep I down, the fans I, are on board. I think there's there's a few fans out there that perhaps you know, and I'm one of them, by the way. I, in a sense, we, of, if, I do if, feel... if, if we sign Timo Werner, I'm done though. I told you. Well, I, 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 I'm, Timo, listen, I'm I've, I've said it. many many times that sometimes the defensive first <laughs> and the quality of the goals that we concede. Borderline Sunday League, man. I'm bought like that's that goal we conceded against Forest was borderline Sunday League, and it was really, really, really poor from my point of view. Iggy, let's get into the goals. Let's get into the goals. Um, that, by we the way, have to improve on that. By the way, Mr. Post Office, right? Just because I criticize my club, <clears throat> it doesn't mean I hate them, right? You are not coming to White Hart Lane and getting three points. If Poro, Van de Ven, Romero, Udogi, and Vicario start, they haven't lost to anyone this season when they've started. Nobody. The only time anyone beat us was Chelsea, but we went down to nine men. No team in Premier League history has won with nine men. So bring this energy after the game if those players I mentioned start for us, because you will not win. I'm not saying you won't deserve it, but you won't get the three points if they start. Fact. I'm just calling it now. I'm just saying it now. If one of them's missing, we're fucked. I will say that as well. If one of them is missing... <laughs> uh, listen, if you want to, against, the oh, best team, against the best teams in the Premier oh, League, <laughs> you want to have your best the best players available. To we have, have to. The best we chance, have to. The best we chance have to of, of getting any result is to having the best... We, we, we haven't got the luxury... Of saying, oh, we got Van der Ven. Don't worry, we got this. I know. Um, Iggy, God, Iggy. God, if one of them are missing, the record speaks for itself. We're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, we we haven't. Like, Dragusin's a good player, but not Van der Ven level. But then, how many how many defenders in this in this season have been no, Van der Ven level? A few, <laughs> but not many. But but even even Poro, no one can play the right back role like him. Nobody. Badogi, yeah. what's, what's the alternative? Ben Davies? Yeah, you got Ben I mean, Davies, uh, Emerson Royale. Woo! <laughs> that, that's yeah. what we're talking about. We haven't got that luxury. So, we, yeah, absolutely. We need to have all our best players available. Didn't, didn't, and didn't, then, then you see a good game of football because Arsenal will bring it. Arsenal are not the team. They're not going to be sending 10 men behind the ball. So, you will see. Uh, 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 I think that's that's a game that you would that you would suits enjoy. us as well, though. That suits yeah, us. Yeah, of course. That but that's us. from an entertainment point of view. You will get the game that you hope to see, an attacking game because both teams will go at it. Man City, those teams. Any after the top five, six teams down, everyone sets up the same way when they come to the lane. They're doing it again. Look, 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 look at the cockiness. You, you haven't learned from the last time. Listen, look, do you want me to make? Do you want me to make another no, video outside the stadium, like no, I did at they, the Emirates they, when, got, I, when they... I bantered your entire fan base? That video went viral. I cast your whole fan base outside your stadium. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I agree. listen, Zafar. I'll think do it for, again. For, for I'll go the, to the, the weigh-in. For the, I'll go to the, I'll go to the away end <laughs> after the game, right in front of all of them. Like, hello. Hello. I'll for the sake, for the sake, for the sake of the game itself. I, swear I, to God, I, I, hope, I hope both teams. I hope both teams have their best eleven, because then you're like, okay, you've got your best eleven. We've got our best eleven. Let, let's play. Let's play the game. That's how I want to see. I don't want to see neither teams have anyone out. I want to see both teams with their best no, eleven. No, 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 no. I disagree. I want Declan Rice injured. I want Saliba injured, so we can batter them. 
five yeah, mil. You don't, you don't, you don't, yeah, but that's not true reflection. You're not going to get a true reflection. That's they, just they egos now. When Chelsea, like... when Chelsea did that to us, no one gave a shit, right? No, but I that's Chelsea. We're, we're talking about Arsenal fans here now. We're talking about Arsenal. We're not talking about Chelsea. You're... Chelsea, we're, we're bringing in. Are you, are say, you okay, saying cool. that, though? Are you saying that, though, because you don't want there to be any excuses from anyone? Is that what you're saying? You're anyone, like, you don't want anyone to have excuses. Of course. How, how else are you going to know where you're at if you don't have your best 11? No, no, I don't care where we're at. I just want to stop them. I, just want to, I, just, I don't want them to win anything. And if we can stop them... That, that's all I care about. I, oh, honestly, we, I'm, I'm we, shameless. We, we, listen, we're going to play famous. a part, whether they want it or not. We've got, we've got Man City to play. We've got Liverpool to play. We've got <laughs> Arsenal to play. We're going to play against the three that are going for the league. So we will have some sort of level. Could you imagine Man City last game of the season at White Lane and they need to win? We're just going to go, well, please, please, come forward. Could you imagine just move out of the way? That game still hasn't got a date, by the way. I know. So I know you said he was going to go and talk about the goals that we conceded um, against uh, Nottingham Forest, but we haven't still got a date for the not, uh, for the Man City game. Yeah, yeah. That's well, gonna you, be, Zaffer, you, gonna, you've got every right to believe in your team. I, if I were your gonna, players, I'll believe in them too. Of course, of course, you have every right. The results are backing you. The way you're playing, you're backing you. Bring no, bring this energy no after the game. No, see all of you. All of you Arsenal fans after the Emirates game went missing. You weren't on our channel for three weeks. In fact, you went missing during December. Was that for the one of them? Months, was it here? All the of them. Okay. All of them. Zaffa, of them come went. on, man. Where, where was you? I can't remember. Still does, obviously, but I don't. I, I, I don't forget. I don't forget. <laughs> anyway, look. look. Let's... <laughs> so, um, we're, 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 really, we're really thinking about the derby. We're already there. <laughs> What what else have we got this season to play for? Let's be honest. Twenty days. We, we, we're gonna get fourth or fifth. It's gonna happen. Right. We're gonna finish fourth or fifth. So that's done. United have written themselves. Yeah, at off. least he's honest still, look. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sabbatical. Okay. He's <laughs> this honest. Guy. This guy. Broads. I think you might Broads, that's what you are. Um <laughs> the um the first goal we scored. Now, um, Werner, who's getting into a good habit of doing it, you know, I'll, I'll say it for what it is, of whipping that ball into that danger zone just in front it's of the goalie. It. He's got to do it. Now, is, all right, is this is more my question, okay? Um, I believe Spurs... Have got one of the most amount of goals scored from own goals. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I remember Ancelotti once saying that it's not luck. If you put enough pressure on your position and force mistakes, you create that. Yeah. So it seems to be Timo Werner's trick, isn't it? That that ball into the box. That's his kind of speciality. But my, my question is this, though, Iggy. As much as it was a good move from him to get that ball in. Yeah. I was having this big argument on social media today, and I put this—I put up a massive speech to everyone. <clears throat> you know, look, look, wrong one. Oops, sorry, guys. I put this speech explaining it all, and oh lord, you know, um, say say no to Timo, right? Oh my god, you've gone. That my, my worry is, <laughs> my worry is this, right? Is that ball in the box that he does? Is that enough to justify signing him as a player? Because he is good at it. I'm not going to pretend that it's not. Right, I'm not a liar. It is good, but is that in is that enough to justify him coming in? My argument was this, all right? You tell me what you think. He's only scored two goals this season. He's missed four big chances, and I'm talking either open goals or from six yards out, like missing the target altogether. His shooting accuracy is 24%. In fact, I'll bring it up rather than read it out. So he's only scored two goals, four big missed chances. His shooting actually is 24%. He misses the target 75% of the time. And he's never scored more than nine goals in the last four years at any club. So all the evidence and his current form proves he does not get goals anymore. He, he doesn't have it in his locker. If you play a front three, I believe you can't play in a front three unless you score goals. And I look at the best front three I've seen Played the pressing game that we pr that we play, and that was Mane, Firmino, and Salah. They scored fifty goals between them, and they got thirty assists the season they won the league. So eighty goal contributions. P 
people then argued with me, yeah, but what about Jack Grealish when he played out wide the season City won the treble? He only scored five goals. And I said, yeah, but they spent big money on a guy in the middle that scored 52 goals, Haaland, broke the English record of goals scored, the European record of goals scored. Are Spurs going to sign a freak to go up front to compensate for Werner not scoring goals? The same way you're trying to say Jack Grealish didn't score enough goals. And then people said to me, oh, but what about Kai Havertz? Kai Havertz has scored 12 goals this year. Their backup player, backup, Trossard, he scored, no, sorry, Trossard scored 12 goals this year. Kai Havertz has scored 10. So the guy, so so the argument against what I'm saying is, oh, but Havertz, what about him? He scored 10 goals. What about the backup? Trossard has scored 12 goals. Iggy, can we honestly be signing, even as a backup, a player that doesn't score more than a couple of goals a season or at most four or five at best? Can we really, really be doing that at Spurs and saying, yeah, this makes sense because he's only 15 million? Look, for me, it just goes to show just how much Harry Kane was papering over the cracks because he scored all our goals pretty much and so on. Um, but essentially, all our goals came from them. We haven't had goal scoring midfielders for goodness how long. We, I don't, when was the last time our, our midfield have got into double figures? Um, I, I, we've had a player, I think Deli Alley maybe. Was the last one I, I, I want to say? I, I'm just, I'm just guessing here, guys. Top of my head, I'm just thinking maybe Deli Ali's contributed quite, a, quite a few of the goals, you know, during during a, a season. But we don't Deli have Ali, Christian Eriksen. Yeah. yeah, but double. I'm talking about getting seven, eight, nine, ten goals a season. We don't have that in our current midfield. Does not have that. Even with Madison there, Johnson might get there. Johnson he might, might get, get there, there. but. I'm saying like we want to you want to see like we don't have enough goals coming from midfield. So Werner doesn't essentially, come close. Doesn't essentially come close you're you're putting it all on the forwards um to score those goals. And so if you've got a midfield that don't score enough enough those goals, Harry Kane's goals have all got like where have those goals been distributed? Harry would always get 25, 30 goals. Iggy, even Richarlison, Iggy, even Richarlison, who I don't rate this season. When he comes on or when he starts, he plays in the front three. He has got us goals. Like, mm. he is outperforming Timo Werner by quite a comfortable amount. And I'm also but, including but, the goals Timo Werner scored at Leipzig this season before he came to us. This guy, there's no goals. That's my, this is my whole... Um, look, for me, if we were playing a, a 4-4-2 and you had two strikers and you had him providing the service on the left-hand side, I can agree. But if we're going to play this way of football, which we're clearly going to move forward with this, he needs to chip in with a lot more goals. And he ain't going to provide that. History tells you, you know, the history that him at Leipzig, him at Chelsea, he isn't that player in terms of goal conversion. He's not going to provide you with those goals that we desperately need, guys. We can't have relying purely on Sonny. The way we did with Harry Kane, we can't rely on one player Really bagging us the goals. Um, so for me, but it, but he's not he's just... not that guy. He's not that guy. He's not that guy. He's not that guy that's gonna get the return 15, 15 goals a season. He is not that guy. Um people say I do hear this a lot about you know, well, sign him as a backup. Listen, Werner should not be a backup. Werner should be someone you sign because you truly believe that he's the right man for the right for the you know for that position moving forwards. For now, is that is helping out? Is 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 clearly getting us because you know we've lost Solomon, we lost Perisic, so we needed someone on that left hand side that could contribute whilst playing Son up front. Um, but is he the guy moving forwards that I want to sign? I don't want to. I don't care if he's cost fifty million. I don't care if he costs fifty million. Is he the right man to play on that left hand side to get the goals to and assists? that we badly require from our front three. No. The same I would say for Kuliszewski. With Johnson, I've said I'm holding back on Johnson. I know he's been getting slammed by quite a few, including you. I'm going to hold fire on him because was I've amazing said... yesterday. No, no, Johnson no, no, was no. fantastic yesterday. I was blown away. No, no, no. I think Johnson, in Postacoglu's way of playing, 
can def there's definitely more that I think there's more in him. I think we can you, you can get more out of him. Mm. I do a believe that he would a lot of fans. I do, but still, I'll be honest with you. I saw, I know it was only Luton, I was there live, uh, you know, it was only yeah, Luton. Yeah. I'll take that into consideration, like the level of the opposition that we had in front of us. I do see something, I do believe that Postacoglu, Johnson and Postacoglu system work well together. And I think we're going to see more of that. And I see that. I see that. I see that. Whether it happens or not remains to be seen. And I'm whole judgment on that. But I see something there. With Werner, there's not really much more than what, we, than what we've seen. And he's been honest like that. He's, he's given us... Exactly what we've seen at Leipzig, what we've seen at Chelsea. No more, no less. He can take the man on. He can put those balls across the box. But in terms of conversion, which is what we really need as well, as well as what he, the other stuff that he brings into the table, we need the conversion rate. We need him to score. We need him to assist a lot more than what than what he does during the course of the season. He's not that guy. So people say, well, sign him as a squad player. No, because but let me tell you this. If we do have that player... Let's say we have a quality left winger coming in and Werner is the is the squad player. Let's say this guy's not performing well, or or worse, happens to us what's happened with a lot of a lot of our big players this season. Van der Ven, Bentenko, Madison, Son going away in in, in, in the competition South Korea, the African players going to the AFCON. We have players missing for a month. Then Werner has to go and go and replace that that injured player that you got out for a month. He's not going to deliver what we want of him, and it's not fair because he. We are asking of him to give us something that we that he cannot give. He's not shown you that he's giving. Why? Why would I want fifty? Why would I expect fifteen goals out of Werner when 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 I look at his 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 record at Chelsea? I look at his record. He's never produced it. So why would I expect of him? You know what I mean? Why would why would I expect? It's like me expecting you to go and go and, go and win a header against a six foot six ki- uh, guy in a corner. You're five foot what? Five foot eight? Five foot five foot nine? However tall you are, still I can't expect you to go and win a header against a six foot six guys. Why would I then expect that? Knowing that you're five foot eight, five foot nine, it doesn't make sense. Expect what you should be expecting of a player. What you don't, you're not gonna you're not gonna get it. So it's pointless for me. Werner, I'm happy to have him to the end of the season, but for next season, guys, honestly, in that front three, we need more. The same way we need more when in terms of defending and how we're conceding stupid goals, we need to do better that way, and we need to definitely provide more going that way. That's that's, um, that's my hmm. take on Werner, man. I'm not going to cuss the guy. I think he's an honest player. I do think he works hard. I do feel he provides, he, he does his best in taking, I think he's doing it a lot more, by the way. I have to say, he's, he's taking the players on a lot more and he's whipping those balls in the box, which causes the defence to all sorts of, um, you know, panic. It, but I need more because that, sooner or later, that's going to stop because teams are going to start countering every goal threat or every threat that you provide. And he will be, you know, he will get found out next season doing the same thing he's doing now. Right, just just a couple of things, right? <clears throat> so I've been I've been I've been starring a couple of the comments while she was speaking because oh, you've got yeah. people's emotions going. I can right. see one of them now. Yeah. Well, somehow we have sixty-four goals, don't we? <clears throat> We're eleven off of the top spot. Eleven goals. Um, we couldn't score against Man City in the FA Cup. So, where did those eleven goals come from? And this is my point. If you listen to what I'm saying. If Timo Werner scored more goals, that gap is where we get it from. But because he doesn't score those goals, the gap is there, right? James, you say Werner had a solid game yesterday. Every week, I explain to everyone, Richarlison, Johnson and Werner, they always step up against the crap teams, right? Here we go, look. This is the bottom half. All the coloured squares or rectangles, are when either Richarlison, Johnson or Werner score or get an assist. Nottingham Forest are 14th in the league. That's the bottom half of the table. If we scroll up to the top half, suddenly looks different, doesn't it? Look, look. Ooh, sorry to be sarcastic. They don't perform at the higher level. I fully expected one of them to do something. So I'm not going to sit there and praise that. 
Eugene, you say that Darwin Nunes misses 24 big chances. He scored 11. You've just, you've just literally contradicted yourself. He scored 11. That's my point. He scored 11. Werner doesn't score goals. My argument is only about goals. Still, at least Timo's poor delivery got us a goal. But he didn't score the goal, right? I'm not in the mud. None of No, no one can argue this. There is nothing to say that Timo Werner's got goals in him. And that, can, and, uh, and, do you know what? And, do you know what? Real and, quick, and, though, in the chat. One last, thing, one last thing, one last thing, right? People that say keep him as a squad player. I don't want squad players. I want competition. I don't want backup. If one of the Arsenal front three doesn't perform, Trossard comes on. He's proper competition. We don't have proper competition across the front line. We don't. Because they can't all score goals. I would, if we're going to have a backup, so Oliver Skip, Ben Davies, and Emerson Royale, they're backups. As soon as they play, you see the drop off. We don't want that. That's why we don't win trophies. We want players that come on. For example, um, Pape Sarbasuma goes off, Benton Core comes on. That's competition. There's not a big drop off, yeah. there's competition. Yeah. So if, if we're going to go with the backup, if we're going to go with backups, not really competition, then give the kids a chance. Give these youngsters like Bergvall and um, what's his face, the Ashley Phillips, give give these type of players a chance to be yeah. the, the backups instead. Because for me, Werner's 29, he's experienced, he's been around the block, he's in his prime and he can't score goals. How can you... He's We don't play with wingers, we play with attacking forwards. How can you be an attacker and not be able to score? In, in what world is this normal? I don't get it. I, I don't I, I, listen, it. I, I put it I put it on par with, with when we were saying Dyer. You know, he plays at the back and he can't properly defend. He's uh, a backup. He's rubbish. But the problem you've got... The, the, the thing is... He's gone to buy Munich. And you know, do, you know, do you know what He's happens? He's gone to Swan? buy Munich. <laughs> they've collapsed. They're 19 points behind <laughs> behind Leverkusen. But look, gone to work, dude, the thing is, what we have, I don't know what it is with, with us as um and listen, I include all of us. Yeah, like when I say when I say Spurs fans, I, I us when I say us, all of us. Jason, fair play. I didn't know. I didn't know. Do you know, do you know Sorry. it feels like we get this special attachment. We get really attached to players. And mate, I, I I'm more for being attached to players, but be attached to players that that I really do cutting it like uh, 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 be attached to Van der Ven. Like, like there's a player that I'm attached to, man. That Van der Ven is a beast. It gives me Jan Vertonghen uh, vibes. He is an absolute unit, rapid. He has all the defensive qualities. Yeah, all right. Def maybe headwind wise, it could. It, 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 that's part of the game that he needs to improve. But he has everything about. It. And now. He's got a sweet left foot. You see the way he struck that ball as if he was like a midfielder smashing one in top bins, like Waniyama used to do from that range there, mm -hmm. right? He is a player you get attached to because you can see exactly what he's going to bring at the, at the club wearing our shirt. We need more than that, guys. The only competition that we have, you're right, in midfield, it, it, because the level of the players are there. They're there. They're close. The, the, the drop-off's not massively... You know, yesterday, um, uh, Postacoglu took Saar and took Basuma off at half time. Took them off. He took them off at half time. On comes Hoiberg. On comes uh, um, uh, Benton Kerr. Right? That, uh, if anything, if anything, the balance in that midfield three was a lot better in the second half than it was in the first half. We had more of a balanced midfield. And that's what I'm talking about. We need to have that same situation going on all over the pitch, possibly. But even more so in the areas that count the most up front, we need to score the goals, man. And if Son's having an off day, which yesterday happened, your Son had an off day yesterday. There's a human at the end of the day. Believe it or not, he's human as well. If he's having an off day, man, the goals need to come from somewhere else and the other forwards need to provide that. And we don't have forwards that will provide us that in a consistent basis. Goals in a consistent basis consistency being the operative word. Without that, we're going to struggle, man, because in the games that really matter, we will go missing and they will, and they will prove costly. If we, they will prove costly in terms of league position where you end at the end of the season. In domestic cups, when you need to perform on the day, 
And that provides consistency. In a cup game, you're in and you're out. That's it. Get get one shot at it, you're out. Uh, Champions League, if we're going Champions League next season or Europa, whichever may be, you've got another lot of games coming up in midweek as well. So we need to rotate. And this year, if anything's taught us anything this year, where all our biggest players were, were out, Romero was out for suspension. Uh, Van de Ven was out for how long? He, he went, he, you know, he missed a, he missed a few games this season. Madison, Son went away. How do we 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 need to be prepared for these situations because injuries are part of football. Iggy, and if I, you lose your best players, I'll get rid of the whole. Okay, that's fine. Again. That's fine. Listen, you you're entitled to your opinion the same way everyone else is, but. If we're generally going to back what Ange said, and like you said, Ange doesn't want to be, doesn't, you know, top four is fine for the season. And Conte had said that previously, but then we need to kick on. We won't be able to kick on if this is the level of, if this is the level that we're going to go, you know, go forward. I think we've got a good team. We've got a good team. I think we need we need definitely three or more, four more players that really, Bridge the gap between ourselves and the three that are ahead of us currently, or three, four teams that are ahead of us. I agree with this. Eze, yeah, Issa, yeah, Bailey, Bailey, Bailey. We're not asking three hundred million pounds worth of players. Paulinha, we know he's a quality player, and Eze. He's, he, I've said the Palace wingers in Bremo from Brentford. I heard you mention it the other day. Um, those are good, good players that will make a difference in this Tottenham side. Experience in the Premier League. And you know what? For the for the way we want to play football, we need those sort of wide forwards like um, Eze, like uh, Wema. Uh, and, you know, you can name a few more others. Ones that are going to, you Paris know, they're going to get you the edge of the Jack seat. Grealish if they don't want him. I'll yeah, but you him. know what? Edge, Jack Grealish, is, I don't know, that, the money that they'll want for him will be... We're not going to get him. I know we're not, but... That, that, but you need you know, those players that when those balls get to the wide area, they'll get you edge, edge of the feet. You get excited about it. And you know, oh, shit, he's going to do something in it. And, and also, also, I'll add, I'll add this, uh, lastly, before we go on, ballers recognise ballers. If you bring a players that are really good technically and, and are clever as well, players like Madison, like so they get excited by playing, being surrounded by playing. You know what? The pressure is not all on me to perform. I can look to my right and I can look to the left and I can share the load with these guys in terms of attacking play. If you're solely relying on one or two players, you can't always put the burden on those players. And if they don't perform, this is what we do as well. When those players, that are our, our best players, are not performing, instead of actually recognising, you know what, we put too much burden on one player and they're not sharing it, we absolutely annihilate them because, ah, oh, some was shit on Sunday. You see him against Nottingham Forest, he was shit. And I'm like, Mate, that's human not to have a good game. The problem is you're putting all of it on him. And if he doesn't step up, who does? And that's what the problem is. You're solely relying on one player when you should be distributing that load with everyone else around him. But how would we do that? By bringing the quality up. So then Son can say, do you know what? I've got my man to my left. I've got my man to my right. All of a sudden, I don't feel the burden. So the, the probability of me having a shit game are less. And even if I do... This guy's going to help me out today. That's got, that guy's going to help me out today. And another day, I'll be helping them out if they're having a bad game. That's what needs to happen, man. It's a ballers team game no at ballers. the end of the day, man. It's a team game. I agree. Ballers do no ballers. Oh, that's why Harry Kane left. Because he just looked around and said, there's no he ballers. Looked around and this is all on me. This is all on me. I've stayed year mm. after year after year. I've been promises, promises, promises. Mm. I've been proven. I'll stay one more year. I'll stay one more year. I'll stay one more year. Looking around, I'm still playing with this lot. He's gone he over there. Well. All right, fair enough. He, it hasn't worked out for him this season in terms of winning the league. Fine. But at least he's fighting for something. He's fighting for top honours. And that's all he's ever asked. He never said we have to win the Premier League. But he's been fighting for it. They scored a goal. And yeah, everyone's that been goal. kind of discussing and whatnot, but <clears throat> I, I I gave my view on it. Um, I I I put the blame on Basuma and Adogi, and I'll I'll show you what I saw. <clears throat> so Adogi's got a player behind him, number twenty-one to mark. The ball's been played out wide, and I, it's I, 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 stop, stop, stop. the the guy that number twenty-one received the ball out wide. Adogi's engaged. He's played yeah. it beyond. Yeah, he's passed, so, he's passed the ball. Past that happens, what, though. That yeah, happens. but Dazudogi, he should be engaging on 21 with a guy on the touchline. Should Werner have gone to him and Dazudogi stayed where he was 
to stop those runs behind them going. You know, that's the first thing I'd, I'd like to line up. Well, I, I think, what, I what think is the plan Werner, there? I think Werner should be protecting Adogi and um, Johnson should be protecting Poro in the transition. But it depends how high up the pitch they were when 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 the attack started. So I, I need to do one slide back to answer. But it, it, if it, I just Foster Coglu's right there as well. Yeah, he's looking with his hands in his pockets. <laughs> the, 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 when you're coaching defenders, one thing you always want is your two centre-backs not to get split. So if you, I've drawn a line between Romero and Van der Ven to show people that's a good distance between them. That's a yeah, nice that's distance fine. between Romero and Van der Ven. What you don't want now is Van der Ven to go out wide to the ball. Basuma, Which... he should be going. But... Basuma's in two minds now because he's got a play behind him. So he's thinking, if I go out wide, who's going to mark my man? So I think Basuma got caught in two minds. But this is where Van der Ven should be saying, you go, I'll get your man. Or what happens next didn't happen. Van der Ven's gone. Look at the gap between Romero and Van der Ven. You can't have that. That's when now Basuma, I've moved the arrow. Basuma should now say, right, Van der Ven's gone. I need to cut, I need to drop back into Van der Ven's position. Yeah, because his man stopped. Ven... Basuma's man stopped. He's not carried on his run. He's stopped there. But even, even if he carried on the run, Basuma yeah. should go anyway. Yeah, of right? course. What happens? The player on the ball passes the ball past Van der Ven. Adogi's left his man allowing number 21 to run forward onto the pass. So Dogi's to blame for allowing that 21 to, to make a run free. Look at Basuma. Look. Now He's Romero's Yeah, now Romero's got to go across and Polo's not on the cover. Now Romero's getting pulled out. But look yeah. look at the gap here between Van der Ven and Romero. That is awful. That 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 any 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 half decent coach will tell you this cannot be happening. Even then Basuma hasn't run back. And finally the ball comes into the box. Romero's gone in. Look at Basuma. He still hasn't got back. So when I when I look at this from, from starting here, Basuma never once gets back either out wide or into the centre-back role. And Adogi allows the man to run past him. For me, the blame is on those two. People blaming Van der Ven are nuts, right? What what do you want Van der Ven to do in this situation? What does anyone want Van der Ven... In this situation, what do fans expect Van der Ven to do? If Basuma hasn't gone... What do fans want Van der Ven to do? He's got to go. He's got no choice. So I, I look at this final frame. But Dogie's miles off his man. Look where number 21 is, Iggy. And look where Dogie is. Look where Basuma is. And look where the centre-back position is. Basuma and Dogie, they got it wrong. And what worries me the most? As well, Poro, me Poro, the most? Poro should have been a bit tighter on, on Wood. I mean, that's the last of the problems. But to really finish it all off, would Polo have could have done better, yeah. But I, th I think what worries me the most with that is that is all coachable, and I've seen that happen too many times. I, I, Iggy, honestly, it's not. I don't. I don't think we're focused on coaching the defense. defensively. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Enough. I agree. I don't think we are. I agree. That's. I said it. Going earlier forward, me. you can say, yeah, we're getting the goals. We've scored sixty-five goals in the league. The, the attacking play, you can see it's being coached, but defensively. It's the, there's a naivety to it. There's there's a proper no. naive. There's a naivety to it. The only other thing I could have done, they say, obviously watching Italian football as well. I think what the two centre backs do, rather than rather than um, where Van der Ven go to the next one where he, get, he comes over to engage. What Van der Ven should have, could have stayed where he was. The two of them, Van der Ven and Romero, go to the edge of the box. The guy running at you would have to carry on running. And then once he gets to the edge of the box, you go and engage to force him to take the shot rather than go engage with him straight away. It seems to me that we always look, you see what Udogi did, he went and engaged with the winger right up on the touchline. He doesn't need to do that. Why doesn't he just step off? Let him have the ball. Where is he going to go? He's on the touchline. Van der Ven, he has to do that coming across, but does he have to do that there? Can he have gone another 10 yards? Get to the edge of the D and then engage. Force him to take a shot. Your goalkeeper's a good shot stopper. Force him to take a shot. But don't split the line between Van der... The only... This is, I'm being harsh here, guys, but hear me out. Van der Ven 
goes to engage to the winger. That's that's uh, that's clearly um, gone past Udogi. Does he have to do that there? Can't he wait another five yards to, before engaging? Have a look round to see if Basuma. There's no point in me going here if this guy doesn't cover my position. If I don't see Basuma coming over, so look, I'm going to go across. You need to get there. If I don't see Basuma covering my spot, why am I going to engage against the player? I force him to shoot. Once he gets to the edge of the box, then I've got to go across because he's now coming into my area in the hope that someone's read that situation and he's going to cover my spot there. That's all I'm going to say. But again, I'll say this. There is a naivety to it. There is a naivety to how we defend. And that's that gets my gripe because it's one of those things that I look for as a fan and whenever I watch football, how teams set up, not just when they're in the middle of the attack, but what if we get caught in a counter? Do we have everyone ready? Where do we start to engage again? We, we, we're a team that literally leaves two centre-backs alone, really, against those sort of setups. And I just feel like if the two defenders have stayed together and just go to the edge of the box and then engage then, my, maybe. But again, I'll say this, Basuma is not a number six, guys. He's not proactive. He doesn't read dangerous can we, can we talk about Basuma, Riggy? Can we talk about Basuma? We right. can talk about Basuma. Um, we we don't we react we we, we react to things we're not we're not proactive as a defensive uh, from a defensive perspective we're not proactive we don't read situation we don't see danger we don't see our players going out there let me go and cover them it, it also verbal physical what's the what's the is it physical verbal no when you verbally uh, when you when you talk to people on pitch with your with your with your, with your you know, tell them to come over you make the gesture say. Yeah, like physical, verbal, like physical communication to say, look, yeah, I don't see enough of that. Commu communication comes in many ways. It can be just a hand gesture. It can be the eyes. It can be the eyes. Yeah, like, we, we're not there. You can see, yeah, we're not there. Like, like If I'm going to go... But, but that no, but hold on, hold on. One minute, one minute, one minute. Um, Beatrix, by the way, thank you for the super chats. Iggy, stop crying. Inter is still first and start <laughs> blaming Ange for this mediocrity. Ange out, Forza, Inter. If you don't know Dietrich, you get see, used to it. You this see, right? You <laughs> see, this is just thanks for the super chat. Though, pure, man. yeah. Thanks for another dumb super chat. Thanks for the money, the tricks. Just, <laughs> just stupid comments after stupid comments. What can you say to that? Someone that says Angel. <laughs> I'm not even going to talk about the Inter AC Milan stuff. I'm not going to even go there. But just the fact they write hashtag Angel. Uh, just, Iggy, Iggy. I've, 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 I've seen players, right? Come and join a team. I've, 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 when I used to play football, I'd go join a new team. And I don't need players to communicate to me. I don't need the manager to communicate to me. I can read the game. I can see the danger and I know I need to do something. Okay. Basuma didn't read the danger and act on it. So either he couldn't read it or he chose to leave others to do it. He's the defensive mid. He's the six, right? That is your job. Doesn't matter what position you play. If you can't read the game, you can't play football. Not the level we want to get to. So I hear what you're saying. That they don't quite communicate with each other. Fair play. But you should be able to read the game as an individual. This isn't the first time Basuma's done this. And by the way, it's not the first time Udogi's done this either. I'm going to call him out as well. The, the, Udogi's been caught quite a few times. But because he's such an upgrade on Ben Davies, we've really praised Udogi. And he has had a good first season for a young player at Spurs. Yeah, we've overhyped him. That's what we do with players when we overhype them. Yeah, yeah, I get that. He, he is naive defensively. But Basuma should know much better. He's older. He's experienced. He's a Premier League player. But he, he still, I'll ask you this question he again. Spurs, but he's been rubbish. Basuma has been rubbish for months. Um, he really has. I, I cussed Brennan Johnson. I cussed Turbo Wiener. But I've, I've started cussing Kulu and Basuma as well now because we'll get on to Kulu as well. But Basuma, like, how can you not know to go there or to go there? How, how can you not know that? Why do you need someone to tell you? Uh, you you're not good enough then. You can't play midfield. No, no. Listen, is, all, all, is, this is all debatable. Everything that we that it's all debatable. It's all like, on the table for debate. Absolutely. Yeah, but you, you as an amateur football player, you played amateur football, right? Yeah. I played amateur football. Did you need someone to tell you 
where to go when other no, teams no. Once, once, you. once, once, once that defender, once I see my centre back has been dragged out to go and catch that left, I, I was, you'd have to, you literally have to put the burners on, sprint to try and close that gap. You, you literally run as fast as you can in a straight line to go and cover the, the gap left by Van der Ven. Then I will, then once that moves over, I will cuss Udogi. And I will cuss Van der Ven for two reasons. Udogi, why does he need to be... Unless Ange is telling them to go and do that. Unless Ange wants wants to fall back, because it's not that like you said. It's not the first time this has happened. So, clearly, the manager is either not telling them to, 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 to not engage, or telling them to engage, or, or I don't know what, what's happening because there's no you can you can excuse it one time, but this has happened a numerous amount of times. So is this a managerial instruction to tell the, the left back to come over to engage, and then the left back has because if you notice we Conte get done with Iggy, he's right. Conte did say tactically, defensively, you don't get it. Conte did say these things. Yeah, it, it was Basuma wasn't his cup of tea, and that, listen, I, but, I but, think... but his reason, but, but but Conte's reason was tactically you don't get it, and do you know something? When 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 we look at goals like that, tactically you could say Basuma can't read the game. There's only one player that we have that can play in number six role still, and that's Hoybier. He's the only natural player. No, he can't. I'm not saying he's the. He no, out of all of that we've got, he's the only one that can play that role. Can he's I tell you why one. he can't play that role? I tell you why he can't play. Out of all the ones that we have, he's the only one that we can. No, he can't. I'm telling can't. you, he's the only one that can. Ah, no, oh, listen, no. I'm agree to disagree. Let, let me. I'm let not me, saying me, he's the best. Let me, let me tell you I'm why saying... I say that. Let me tell you why I say that. The way we play our number six, the number six often goes to the edge of the box or into the box to receive the ball when we play it out from the back. Our number six needs to be able to receive and quickly play. Normally, the ball comes to the six when it does come to him and he plays it straight back to Vicario. So I drag the man, play to the goalkeeper. The man behind me then goes, I step to the side, I receive. And by the way, by the way, um, I did, um, I did explain all this. Whoops, let me move this comment off the screen a minute. Sorry, guys. Apologies. Whoops. I did explain all this about the six moving, the ball coming into the six, moving out of the six. This is this is what but this is why the, inver the, inver the inverted fullbacks. No, this is no, this is us playing out from the back, not, yeah. not the fullbacks inverting high up, right? So our number six needs to be able to receive the ball in the box under pressure. You saw what happened in the last five minutes where the ball came Hoybeg in the box and he squared it straight to their striker. Do you remember that? Towards yeah, the end yeah, of the game. yeah. We nearly got caught. We nearly got caught at the end there. That, that's why Hoybeg can't be the six. He can't. If we didn't play the way we played and we played with a number six just being a holding mid, like you're just a holding mid, then, then I would agree with you. But when I look at the way we play the six, Hoybeg will be a disaster. He'll be good for 20 minutes, Iggy. He'll be good for 30 minutes like he did when he came on um, yeah. the other day. I'm, ju I'm just thinking, like, we I tried Benfica there. It, it won't, see, Basuma, see, this is, see, this is the most frustrating thing. The six receiving the ball. He can do that. Basuma can do that, and he can do it really well. It's the defensive side he can't do. Whereas Hoybier, he can do the defensive side, but he can't play the footballing side. Is if, if we could take the defender out of Hoybier, the baller out of Basuma, we've got our six. It's always half we measures, isn't it? We've always got a half half. <laughs> but the thing is, we, we tried Bentonko there. Bentonko, um Bentonko can do it. Bentonko can do it, but he's not he's not quite back. He's not quite ready yet. He's not quite back. He can do it, but he's but so I think Bentonko is better as an eight. I think he's better as an eight, though. Yeah, yeah, I like I like him there as well. So so listen, if is this this is like Square pegs, round hole situation. If we don't have players that suit for purpose, move them on. That's not to say that Basuma is not a good player. Basuma is a very good player. He, does he, is he fit for purpose? The answer is for what the way we want to do and what we require, he is not. So therefore, we have to move them on. Otherwise, what's the point of having him in the team? Unless you're going to play him further up the field. 
I don't know, guys. You maybe the guys in the chat can you can let us know what your thoughts are on on not only Basuma but even what we've been talking about. Yes, Zuba Mendy, hundred percent. But you know, man, everyone, you know. but everyone in Europe wants this guy. We're, we're probably going to be tenth on the list of this guy. The amount of clubs that want him. The thing is, like, why? The, we need to start uh, having a, a a recruitment team that move quicker than the rest of you. If, if you can if you cannot compete with the elite of European clubs because they they will outbid you or they have more prestige, whatever you want to call it, right? You need to have a recruitment team that moves quick. Like by the time the rest of the, the rest of Europe has got the attention on him, you've already wrapped the deal up. Why? That's that's how we got to move. Manu Kone, another one. So there's clearly, right. but, but, so but, toxic, but, toxic, but, toxic, so toxic picked his player. Someone else has just picked up another player. How comes these Palinia? guys know about that? Palinia 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 Palinia. Is another one. But we need to move quick. Oh, no, no. Right, but, right, but yeah. see, the, the, do you remember, do you, okay, you know earlier on, I said how that stadium, there's too many lies, right? There's too many lies. <laughs> Bissouma is a lie. After 10 games, everyone said, you see what happens when, a, when we get a proper coach? You see what happens when Basuma's coached properly? Conte screwed it up. Conte can't coach. Now, the debate across all platforms is, should we Conte keep Basuma? Conte, Does, Conte, or, or Conte might have had a point. Or maybe Conte can coach, but he told us too many truths and we got pissed off with it. Look, I, Conte, I, 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 I've done a problem with Conte's truth, as everyone calls it. Uh, the problem with uh, Conte is just he's savage. He's not media he's friendly, just, friendly. He's just Conte's savage. Friendly. He, he just he's said it in a friendly. way that was like, and just media hell, friendly. man. <laughs> yeah, and, he was just, too, he was just savage. Like, I love you guys. And some love people you. love that savage talk. Uh, uh, it's yeah. not for some people. So, listen, horses for courses, man. He's gone anyway now, so there's no point talking about him no more. If someone came in the summer, and offered us thirty million pounds for Basuma. Would you sell him? Only if we're going to use that fucking money and put it towards a number six that the guys in the chat just mentioned, and you mentioned mm. that there is. If we then use that money to go and get, you know, a player that's super purpose, a proper number six, and yeah. And by the way, I don't, you know, you know, I don't think Amrabat. I, I know people. I know. I know people are gonna say, "Nah, man, he's been shit at Man United. He ain't playing for Man United." Played out of position at Man United. I, I, this is. I, I, I think. Let me tell you why I say Amrabat, guys. He's because he's gonna go. He's, Man United are not gonna sign him. They're gonna send him back to Fiorentina, and he's got one well, we more year in his contract. Uh, we can do better I, than Amrabat. We we're going to put it all on the table, up for debate. Can we do better than Amrabat? But will Amrabat be better than what we currently have in the squad? Is he better than what we currently have? <laughs> Would he be better than what we have? It's not hard. <laughs> then, then, then start with Amrabat, and then if you can get better, then go and get better. But what I'm saying, guys, he United are not going to sign him. They're going to send him to Fiorentina, and he's got one more year in 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 his contract. Look, there you go. No, Amrabat is shit. On what on what basis have we've made that double D? On what basis are, uh, uh, can you say that? I've seen him at Fiorentina and I've seen him at United and they're two different players. Two different players. Your Amrabat is basically getting Werner in. How can, how's that even the same? How? Uh, look, I'll, I'll be honest. I, 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 I think Amrabat is played out of position at Man United, but I don't want Amrabat. I think we can do much, much better. I, 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 the... Look, we've mentioned the names. Manu Kone, Zubamendi, Paulinia, Onana, they're, they're all better than the, the players we've got that are playing in that role right now. There's, the see, players are out there. The players see, are Ruben there. Neves is someone I wanted years ago when he was at Wolves. I wanted him from time ago. But, isn't he but, he's, 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 but he's in Saudi though as well. Where's he going to come back? You're going to get him off. That, that. But is it Neves? Is it Neves? Is it Neves a more forward player? He's not a holding he, mid. He's, he's, he can play. He, he, he played. He's more. Listen, he's better. He's like in that Benson role, right? And it chips in with some really good goals. But he can play there as well. But we're talking somebody that's specifically good in that role. And we need a number six. That That is his role. That's his number one role. We don't want a number eight or a number 10 to play number six. We don't want people fitting in. we got to stop. It's like we get a striker 
and we want to play a number 10. We've got a number 6 and we want to play a number 8. We've got a number 9 and we want to play a number 10. Uh, just go and get the player that does the role. That is his expertise. Number 6. The number 9. That is his expertise. Go and get it. If you need a left winger, don't go and buy, uh, don't go and buy right centre mid. Go and get this. The, the, the point of the matter is you're getting an expert for that role. If the, if he can then cover another role in in case of emergencies, so be it. But go and get that number one player for that role. If we need a left winger, go and get a left winger. Why are you going to get a, a centre mid to go and play there or at number 10 to go and play on the left? It doesn't work. Guys, we've got 500 people watching across Facebook, YouTube, Twitch and X. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Like, subscribe, all that goodness. I'm enjoying the um, show. I'm enjoying the show tonight. I think we're covering quite a bit. I'm enjoying right. it. <clears throat> enjoying it? I mean, I'm enjoying it. Let's, 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 um, <laughs> I'm just looking at what else there is to cover. I want to, all right. You look worried. You don't look worried still. Don't look worried, man. No, because it's a bit controversial, this one. Not, 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 not. Never. Us. Never. <laughs> Ooh, uh -huh. Never. I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about two things. The Madison punch. It should have gone. There you go. And the Danilo foul, right? Firstly, this punch by Madison, is it a yellow card or not? Therefore, his second yellow red card. And secondly, what is the difference between the red card Basuma got at Forest and this tackle that ended up on the Celso's knees. Can someone tell me? Because I'll tell you now, if this punch was by Romero, the police would be taking him off the pitch in handcuffs. And if this tackle was by Romero, the police would be taking him off in handcuffs again. Let's start with the punch. Is this is this a second yellow for me, Iggy? I think he should have got sent off. Yeah, he should have gone. We got we got lucky on that one, man. There's, 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 I, I don't lucky. understand why yeah. it didn't it didn't go in VAR. If that gets looked at a VAR, I'm it went, surprised. No, it went to VAR. It went to VAR. And they they didn't feel they didn't deem it. It was enough. Yeah. See, yeah. for me, if it's if it's a contact sport and we're talking about contacts, <laughs> that's contact right there. For me, that's a red card in any. If we had received that, we 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 be we be outraged. And I completely get the player being outraged for not for not you know not looking at the for not having VAR getting involved and and Forest fans might have been outraged too, but I hope they feel just as outraged as the one the tackle that they saw on Los Elso because that's a red card in everywhere we saw we saw Romero get sent off. What was it that one in the area where they gave a penalty? He, he did the clearance and he got the player and they gave a penalty and 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 a red card for Romero. I think it was. I can't remember, guys. Do you remember that one? He followed through. He cleared the ball, but he connected the player. What game was it? Is it Chelsea? Romero got sent off. That's I, know that, there was a, I know there's a stupid one where Son got... Yeah, yeah. The guys in the chat penalty. saying Chelsea. It... Romero got sent off, and yeah, there was but... a penalty. Okay, the difference is... See, this is, this is where that one's a bit different. The aggression Aguero went in on that tackle... But was it... Was, was deemed as excessive... But what's, well, what's I don't think these were as, I don't think I don't think they were as full on bangers. If Los well, maybe, they knees, no, maybe they were. Still, maybe they were. Still, if Los Celso's knees, if Los Celso's yeah. knees, if they if he if they're not bent the way they are now, that they're bent, they're bent. If they if he's got his boots planted to the floor, his 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 ACL's yeah, bent, gone, mate. His ACL. Bent. Listen, people at this. Do you think, people, right, do you think it's somebody somebody this... in the chat has done his ACL playing football? I'm sure of it. If your feet are planted to the floor or your legs are straight and your boots are planted to the floor and he goes through like that, his ankle, his, 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 his knee, sorry, is going. Look at like that. You can't... How can you excuse the, him going that high? It look... Listen, the stills, photo stills always look worse. Always do. You see, even 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 uh, Basuma's challenge there looks worse than it actually was on the day. I remember thinking, come on, man. But at the end of the day, once your your stud shows, you go. You got to go. There's my, not yeah, enough my, consistency. My, my issue is, though, my, my issue is it, uh, there's not enough consistency. But also, it's done on reputation of the player. Like I've said, if that was Romero in both of those, the Madison and the Danilo tackle, 
you know Romero's off the pitch. If that was Casemiro, he'd be sent off as well. It's almost yeah, like yeah. There's definitely players. a premeditated for certain players that can't get yeah, away with it. Yeah, but but because of that, everyone else gets away with it. When hold on a minute, why aren't you punishing them now? I look since since that Liverpool game where we got lucky with a couple of decisions. Liverpool went down to nine men. We scored the own goal in the last minute. Blah blah okay. blah. Since that game, I think so many ridiculous decisions have gone against us, like a lot. Spurs this season, I I, I think if we were to if I was to go for every game again. And look at all the decisions, the yellows, the reds, moments that have cost us. I bet you Spurs have been one of the most mistreated clubs this season with these kinds of decisions. I know the Madison one we got away with, right? I know it. And I know we got a bit lucky in the Liverpool game. Fair play. Like, we've admitted it. We've said. But I think there's a hell of a lot more that haven't gone our way. Like, more so when, this, when, Romero's in, when, when Romero's involved... We say it all the time. As soon as you see a challenge and you're thinking, fuck me, that's Romero. You know, because we're already thinking that. So everyone else is thinking that. It seems to be that there's... we make. It's like people make up their minds when it's Romero. If, if that same challenge is put by someone else in the team, it's 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 almost like, um, you know, Udogi, yellow card, guaranteed. Benton Court, there seems to be that he can't get away with a game without getting a yellow card. There seems to be certain players that, and I'm sure that before, before anyone that attacks, I'm sure people will have their own teams. If you're not a Spurs support, you support other teams. You will have that one or two players that their, their, their referee seems to have their eye on. And the same challenge could be put by another player and they get away with it. But that player that they have their eye on, if they miss it, it's like almost you have to give them a yellow card so you can say, now you can control yourself. Like it's almost as if you're saying to them, "You're on the yellow now. Now you've got to sort yourself. You know, calm yourself down a little bit." It's like you have to put the brakes on them by giving them a yellow. Don't do that, man. At the end of the day, you evaluate every foul, regardless of the player that makes it, and you deem it if it's punishable for you with a yellow, red, or not. You don't judge it on depending on who it is that makes that foul. Madison, if that had been Romero, he would have gone. We know this. But because it's Madison, he got away with it. And that's the same. That's the attitude. That's that's a wrong attitude. At the end of the day, you've got to judge the actual, uh, the, 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 the the action of what happened rather than the player that makes it. Can we um talk about Madison, actually, right? So, By the way, there's, there's that, that same player, by the way, took him out two or three times. There was like three or four separate occasions where Yates, he cleaned Yates, him out. Yates, Yates, Yates is a you know, little I have to shit. say that. He, he should have gone for way sooner. That, that guy is, is in the Richarlison, um, Mopai. He's in, he's in that wind-up merchant group. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, a piece, he's a piece of work. But you, you've got to learn to deal with these characters. They're in of football. Course. You've got to learn to, you know. But um, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You, you punish the action, not the player that commits it. Does it if, it's regardless if he's... Whoever it is, whether it's a big name, small name, white, black, you know, it doesn't matter. You evaluate the foul being made and you deem it, if you deem it punishable, you do so using the cards that you have your 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 disposal or you say it's fine. It's a foul. Get on with it. Madison. Yeah, listen, for me... So, so Wayne, Wayne Holland, <clears throat> Wayne Holland is in the chat. He's I remember what he man. said. I remember what he said. He said, oh, yeah, this would I happen. remember it. I remember that. And, 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 and Iggy, do you know what? I, I'm going to say it. When he's we, need new, yeah. we, we, we need a new number 10. Madison, what? for me, is not the answer. He's not. He's not. No, he's inconsistent. That's... Now, Iggy, hear me out. Hear me out. He's a good player on the ball. That's a bit out there. He's man. a baller. But, what, what, hold on. He's a baller at dribbling. Right? Madison can dribble. There's no doubt. He's got that ability to find those short-range passes in him. He's got the odd goal in him. But you know what? He's not Ericsson. Ericsson had not just goals in him, but those Different players over the... still, man. Er that, that... Ericsson, Ericsson you're looking, could... Un, okay. un... Yeah, but you're looking at a player with different characteristics. I know, but hear me out. We need both. We need both types of attacking mids. Ericsson, his, 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 his range of passing split defences Madison doesn't do that and the other thing with Madison 
we we can't have a player in such an important role that can only play three or four months of a season. It's ridiculous. And 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 he's 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 back now. He's fit. He's he's he's, he's injury free. This guy comes off after 60, 70 minutes every single week. Iggy, I I, I don't think Madison is the answer look in the look. I'd going for I'd keep him. Hunt, see, now that's competition. Madison is not backup, he's competition. I think we need another number 10 to either push Madison or to take his place and Madison be be the number the, the second choice. But see, when you mention when you I, I, I don't want to say it because I like Madison. He's a kind of player that I think when we signed him, I was like, what's a signing? And I wouldn't sell him. I'm not saying sell him. I'm not saying get rid of him. No, but you no. can't have a player in such an important position. It's like Vicario. If Vicario could only play half a season, what's the point? No, no, I hear you. I hear you. I, I, listen, I don't have a problem having variation. I don't have a problem having an, another player that can play in that position, be it Lo Celso. If we're going to move, and by the way, I do think Lo Celso should have a bit more game time now that he's available, at least at the end of the season, and then evaluate his situation. And if we deem him worthy keeping him another season or get rid to get someone who's a bit more available for the Spurs cause and not just for the Argentina cause, just to give an example. So I, I'm, I'm in agreeing with that. We, we, we have, there's nothing stopping us adding to the squad and if that means the number 10 also then then absolutely no issue with it if you're going to talk to me that the player that we need is an Ericsson type of player that can then pick up the ball from Poro and then switch it out left to Werner and and, and, and you know and vice versa receiving from Dogi, switching it out to Kuliszewski or Brendan Johnson on the right hand side I can agree with that there's a lot of situations sometimes where the, the ball comes from the wide areas into the midfield and you're just looking for a switch ball because our winger is isolated, the fullback, then I'll say to you, yeah, you're right. We do need a player with those characteristics. Perhaps someone like Ruben Neves that was mentioned earlier on. He has that in his range. Um, there's, there's, you know, there's, you know, a, a McAllister sort of player. He has that in his locker as well. I can agree with that. No problem with that. If we are now expecting Madison to be that player. That is not in his characteristics. It's the same example I'm using what, with Werner earlier on. If we're looking 15 goals from Werner, we're not, he's, he's shown you that he's not that player. Why would you expect that of him? Madison, same thing. He is not that player that gets and hits a, a Glenn Hoddle type of pass. He is not that guy. Why would you expect that from him? He's more of like... You know, in the small gaps, if you know, needle, it, it puts the pass through the needle, like, a needle sort of pass. It, it, when when everything's all tight, it spaces, everyone's behind the ball. He, he tries to play into the little gaps. You know, that's Madison right there. That's what he does. Do I believe he's probably an out and out number ten? Probably not, man. I reckon he's poor. He more, he, he would be more useful probably as a, as an eight and have someone else in there as well with him. People are that saying that in the comments. That can share that responsibility. No, I, I listen. I can absolutely agree with all those points, but what I would never, ever, you would never have me on board when you're expecting certain characteristics from a player that you want. Let's say the Glenn Hoddle passes or those sort of players that like Redknapp used to. Jamie Redknapp used to be good at those sort of passes as well, and Gerard, those sort of players. If you want players with those characteristics. You go and get players with those. You don't then. You don't get Madison to do that job. You don't go get Werner to, and then expect fifteen goals out of him. It's just stupid. It is just stupid. Go and get the players fit for purpose. You don't get Basuma and play on a number six because he's not proactive. He reads the dangers too late. So therefore, a number six that's not good at scanning or reading dangerous situations when we're in attacking. Whilst we're attacking, the number six should be looking around saying, all right, what's going to happen if we lose the ball up there? He's got to almost see, work out the worst case scenarios in if we get caught in a counter where we're, you know, or organiser, someone who organises in the middle of the pitch. That's what a number six, a proper my number six is. Why are you getting Basuma to do that? Right? He doesn't have the characteristics to do that. Go and get the player that you need. Until we start doing that, we will never, ever pick up the fruits of what Ange is trying to do. And I hope we recognise that, we address that, and we act upon it in the summer to then give Ange the best, best 
chance possible to go at it in the second in the second in the, in the second season. Otherwise, we'll be talking about another manager failure in, in halfway through the second half of the season. It's funny you mention that because um, today on Talk Sport, um, funny how like I make you laugh. I'm here to amuse you. <laughs> now that was good, fellas. If you know, I'm a massive good. I know, I know, I know. Uh, I know. The, I know. Joe Pesci. I, I, I remember the um, it was in the restaurant, wasn't it? The restaurant scene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Simon Jordan and Graham Sunis, they had a little uh, bust up over the ambition of Spurs under Posta Coglu, and um, basically, do, do you know what? I don't think Simon Jordan can be any further up Daniel Levy's ass if he tried. Okay, they're mates, man. They're mates. Well, they're mates, he, isn't he, they? he actually said, he actually said in that video, right? People go into talk sport and see it. I in haven't that seen video, it. Tell me about it. I'll have a look at it later. So, so the argument was over something Graham Sooner says, saying, "How can we call Spurs a big club? They they've won two league cups in like thirty years, like." Are you for real? Graham Souness was defending the fan, saying, you're a fan. It's been miserable. How can you tell me the fans, they, 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 they think that this is all okay? If you're Daniel Levy, if you're a shareholder, if you're an investor, it's fantastic. You've got all these assets. The money's good. The profits, the income, the revenue. And... um. As a business, brilliant. As a football club, stop, stop, you know, this this talk of being big. And they tried to gang up on Graham Sooners, but Graham Sooners held his ground. He said, look, the best chance they had was under Poch. He got them to a Champions League final. You go big in the summer, you go again and get it over the line. They didn't. And look what's happened to them since. Now, Ange, are they going to go big? Are they going to go and spend a hundred million on Declan Rice? Are they going to go and sell one of their top players like they did with Kane and spend all that money on Van Dyke and Allison? No, they haven't. They haven't done that. So what 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 are they doing? And they were like going back and forth. And Simon Jordan, right? This weasel, this guy, I swear on my life, I, I, I'd love to debate him. I know he'll, he'll talk with a more articulate tongue and he'll throw all these financial terms at me but I'll rinse him because he's cut from the same cloth. Simon Jordan was chairman at Crystal Palace, did nothing, right? He's just like Levy. They're at football clubs, they've achieved nothing. And, and Simon Jordan, he said, I spoke to Daniel Levy last week. So that that that, that ties in with what you said, Iggy. They're friends, right? He, he literally said in that video, I spoke to Daniel Levy last week. And they were talking about Daniel Levy says he wants investment. He needs new investment. And then Sunis was saying, but you've got all the revenue from the stadium. You've got all the revenue from all these events you're doing. You, you, you're, you're, you're running the business in line with FFP. What, what do you need new investment for? For what? Still, for what? someone... Still, wait, wait, wait. someone so, so, just to, to say, yeah. someone, someone just sent me a screenshot of it's in Italian, but it said Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is a, is a money machine. Market, this money machine, yeah, 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 yeah. It said between food and drink only, it made uh over a million euros a match, a million euros a match on food and drink, yeah. Iggy makes about anyway, three, we're, we're, three to five million a match day in total, but Simon. Right, so Graham soon has said to him, but hold on. If Spurs want to go to the next level, they've got to spend big on players, right? They've got to change, which is everything we've been arguing about on this channel for God knows how long. So Graham Souness is talking like a fan. He's talking like one of us. A football man. And a, football a football man. man. And he cares about Spurs. He used to play for Spurs. And he said, he said, what is the point of this stadium, the money it makes, the revenue from the NFL, the comp, what is the point of all this? And being in line with FFP, if you're not going to do these things now, what is the point? We've heard, we've heard and, this and, before. Wait, 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 wait. But he said he asked he asked Simon Jordan a question because Simon Jordan spoke to Daniel Levy a week ago. He said to him, Why does he need new investment? For what? And Simon Jordan said, Because from a business perspective, they can see more opportunities, the hotel, the this. Oh, 
So mm. email Simon. This Simon Jordan for football. Step. Murray. Everyone go and watch that video. Go on to talk sport. Graham Sooners versus Simon know. Jordan about Ange. He oh. said, I spoke to he goes, I spoke to Levy last week. The new investment is to scale new opportunities off the pitch. It's not, not about the football. football. It's so, not so, about football. It, so it, when it, Iggy it, says, it, Mari, just I'll bring you in now. So when Iggy just said, give Ange the plays he wants, let's see what they well, this new investment's got nothing to do with that, man. Like it, it's not, yeah, it's not doing it. It, it. This is what drives me crazy. Like, I won't say names, but some of these other channels, you guys are over there. You guys are over there. And I guess in American sports, when you are a supporter of a team that does not do well and everybody else sees it, as a fan of the club, you, you seem to accept it. But it almost seems like they're do those who are happy clappers, who are happy financially do doing well, that it almost feels like not only insiders like us, right? We can't talk critical of the club, but outsiders, they they just like every time yo, know, the other day I went to a I went to um a, a restaurant like slash bar to 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 watch some of the um, female basketball games. And in this bar, right, you know, I end up meeting a, a Liverpool fan, right? And another a person of a fan of um I can't remember the name of the uh the the the, the team. It's a smaller, smaller club. I, I forget. But the Liverpool fan said, Oh, you're a Tottenham fan. He said, Oh man, I feel sorry for you. And it's just like, gosh, I'm so sick and tired of hearing that. But I'm like, why are you so sick and tired of like what the why do you feel so bad for you know for my club for me and he goes on to say once again he said no you guys you guys should be great you guys should be you know and the guys from england it's like you guys should be better but man daniel levy always comes up in the conversation you guys you guys don't spend you guys don't have football ambition you guys are all about making money this is a liverpool fan on holiday here in America, telling me this uh, this stuff. Like everywhere I go, whenever I mention I'm a Tottenham fan, oh, you guys have no ambition, man. You guys make money. Everybody knows we make money, but they all know that we have, don't have ambition. And then you hear them go on stream, like a live stream. It's just like nothing here to see. Our club is in good hands. We're FFP L Kings. With now FFP is going to be scrapped, right? What what what, what good to use to be FFP kings? Now they're about to scrap it, so it means nothing anymore. And so it's it's a it's a joke. Football would never be. It's a it's like it's an afterthought, right? It's 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 not. It's it's part of the portfolio, but it's not the portfolio. It's not the portfolio, and and that's the. The discouraging, discouraging thing for me because it's like, what do I have to hope for? And for all those, like, I love Edge, I love Edge. Great, I'm not telling you not to love Edge. I love Edge too, but I know how this story is going to end until Daniel Levy says, F that. Yo, I want to win trophies for this manager. I want to provide everything his heart's desire for this club. I want our fans to be happy with glory. I'm not gonna change my mind. He's gonna end up be like if, if he ends up being like Potch, getting us so close that we can taste it, and it's just kind of like I'm gonna take that bottle of water away from you and start over from scratch. That's how I feel. Like we're only gonna get to a point where we get close, and we're not gonna cross the line because the ambition of this club is to build hotels, race tracks. Entertainment centers, it, it's it's frustrating. Got a super chat from G Mars. The worst run in the Premier League fifth won't be a bottle job. Um, well, we're going to find out this summer. We've been saying for a while we'll find out this summer, but this talk of new investment and whatnot. It, people should go and watch that video between Jordan and Graham Sooners. It, it, it's one of those where 
even Simon Jordan couldn't be bothered to argue it. Like he, even he's fed up of it. So it was quite an interesting one. Um, I want to um, talk about this guy, <clears throat> Van der Ven. Mm-hmm. Um, look, I, I, I personally think he's the best player at the club. Um, not everyone agrees with me. We had this chat yesterday, last night. Some think Vicari is better. Some think Sun's better. Some think Madison. I think Van der Ven's the best player at the club. And the reason I say it is when he doesn't start, I always think, oh, shit. When he starts, I feel a bit, bit, bit of confidence about the result. Um, he put in a good defensive display yesterday. Um, some argue about him going out wide for the first goal. Should he have gone? But we kind of debated that already. The goal he scored. I mean, I don't know any forward player in our team other than the son that scores a goal like that. That was a bullet of a strike. And do you know something? You know when the goalie doesn't move. And all he does is this. He looks at the ball in the net. You you know it's you know it's a tenner in strike. That that was a. It reminded me of that. Um, Victor, remember, one, one. remember, remember John Anarisa when he hit that free kick, that direct free kick that went into the top yes. corner years ago for Liverpool. It was that kind of a strike where you're not stopping it. it doesn't matter who's in goal. It's a goal. Um, Victor, goal like that too. One of mine had a goal like that too against Liverpool. Who? Against Victor. Liverpool away, Van Yama, when yeah. he struck that ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Spot on. Spot on. Boys, Listen, uh, it's quality, man. Top, it's, top, top well, player, I, I, I'll he's let really Murray say his piece, man. I've already spoke about him previously, but if if those have missed it, man, for me, yeah. Van der Ben, his he's watch. an absolute beast. He's, 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 he's a unit, man. He has everything in his locker. And how, his, how have we signed his, him and no one else tried to get him? It's scared. How, it's scared. How? We, see, the, be- the beautiful thing there is none of us <laughs> really knew him. None, none of us really knew him. But what we did there, we moved early. We moved early and we got an absolute... And that's how we got to do we got to find these gems in the German league, in the French league, whatever you want to go and find them. We need to go and look for these gems and act quicker before they become big. If we had missed out another half season more, we'd be, we, we, we wouldn't be signing it, this player. It, but the, worry, the, the concern... In the Liverpool concern, were thinking. They were thinking. They, they were thinking that we acted. This is what I'm saying. That's how we got to move. The thing is now, now... We've got an absolute gem of a player. He's class. Him, for me, and I've said this numerous times, him first, Vicario second. Not only have they been two great signings, they've been our best players this season by a country mile. Those two guys in that order. Um, he's an absolute gem. And for me, he's going to get even more better. He's going to play the Euros. He's going to get more window. And I think a lot of clubs will see what we see in him. And yeah, but- that- yeah, and that's that's where that's where is. Do we have enough enough ambition for him to believe that we can do something, <laughs> or does he move on as soon as the cl- big clubs come sniffing? And that, that, he's on that's a long. He's on a long. He's on I, a long contract. I will say this, he's on a long contract. It's going to be yeah, hard to get him out. Of that we're not Iggy. stupid. Yeah, we have to get money from him, but they Iggy. will come. Iggy, I will say this. We could force him to stay. You're giving. Yeah. Them, you're giving them just a little bit. Too much credit the, the the scouting because I will say this I, I will say this <laughs> because Tapsoba was the number one target and for those who are watching Tapsoba has been amazing and Van de Ven was the you know backup choice kind of like Maya and Vicario right the second choice and I think we you know most times we drop the ball I think we were lucky to hit the nail on the you know, getting by with the money in regards to VDB, you know, because I can remember a lot of people were upset at the beginning. We didn't know anything about him. And thank thank goodness he has flourished. He has been amazing. He, his form has been been awesome. Definitely the probably the candidate for player of the year, if not Vicario. I, I think our, our scout department, you know, finally, okay, you know, they got they got this one right. Um, and so, but he's, he's been, he's been amazing. The one person I still want to wait to see because I've seen him two or three times in the Argentinian league. I actually want to see what Valise can do because in the box, 
All I can tell you is he knows where to be in the he knows where to be in the box to be able to score. Either it's a header or a putback. Like and that is that is a a intelligence you have to have. And so with Valise, I'm not ready to put a jury, um, you know, the jury on him. But I think, you know, VDV, Vicario, and Belize could be the three gems of, you know, this past summer transfer window. The three Vs. The three Vs, yeah, the three Vs. Just that Belize is going through a harder route. Hopefully we... Correct. It's not doing much, though, at um, Sevilla, though, Belize, is it? Belize is a mistake, guys. It's another one. We've done it again. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not ready to put. I'm not ready to put the. the sure, the, sure. Listen, listen. That's fine. You, the you, thing you, is, you I'm, cannot improve. You cannot improve unless you play regular matches. He's not getting those matches. So each year of his youth is a year that all the other players in world football are pushing ahead of him. I've said this many a time. Young players need to play ball. It's more important than training. When you're young, you need to be on that pitch playing the matches more than the training. You've done your training since you were eight years old. You get up to yeah. 18, you've trained. You've trained, right? You need matches. If he's not getting that, this guy's going to regress. I, 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 no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm, and I don't see have, how he improves. He's going to have to play next season. Has to, he, I mean, he just has to play. I feel bad for him. I almost felt like he should have gone to Italy. You should have gone to one of the clubs in Italy and be able to just develop. play. If you if the guy's got to succeed in the Premier League, you need him to play in a Premier League team. So yeah. he can go anywhere. And there's so many teams in the Premier League that will give him that experience. He need. I'm all, I'm a firm believer that if you're going to succeed, if if you've been bought by a club in whatever respective country that could play, you should be playing in that league. Play there. Play in another team in that same league but play in that league so you can actually get the feel of what it's like going to different venues of, of, of that Premier League stadiums, playing against Premier League opponents. You go to Brighton, you go to Wolves, you go to Nottingham Forest, you go to whatever team that's going to guarantee you a majority success of game time. He's gone to Sevilla who and he's not, he's not getting that time. I don't see what him going to Sevilla is actually going to do for him in terms of succeeding in the Premier League. I just don't get it. I've never understood that move from the get-go, but, you know, maybe that's just my take on it. I'll tell you why, because it's the only club that's, that's prepared to give us money so that we don't have this player sitting in the club and just earning wages. It, it was a business move. Yeah, so it's, he, it's, it's, it, we, never bought him. We, we never bought him because we genuinely believed in a player that's consistently at Tottenham. We bought him to sen- essentially make money on him. I know some people in the chat mentioned Tim Vickery. I want to take Tim Vickery, Tim Vickery as the gospel in regards to talent, let alone South American talent. I like how they put he's the expert. No, he just he will say like, <laughs> no. I've heard him speak before. <laughs> no, no, I heard him speak before. He will say like, that's funny. Uh, Edric, that's kind of thing I would say. Good. Oh no, shit. Like yeah, Sherlock Holmes could see Edric is 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 great. But he's had some misses. Like he, there's a couple of people that he's not called out. That oh, okay, this person's a great talent. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put too much stake in that. I, I just think that he needs to be in an environment where they can set him up to flourish to be able to play. And I was thinking, like maybe he should went to one of the Italian clubs because usually a lot of Argentinians they go straight, you know, to Syria. You know, sometimes La Liga to be able to, especially at his age, to to to, to develop. You know, Sergio Aguero when he went. You know, a couple of uh, those players, except for City, except for City, which got Ekavechi, who's really good. Um, they signed him. Um, we looked at him for a second, and and Barco. Listen for this name, Valentin Barco, um, who signed with Brighton. Brighton is always. Being smart about it, City was interested in him. Barco went to uh, to to um, to Brighton. He's going to be a real, real good player when he start, when he plays next season. So, yeah, it's um, I don't put too much stock on what Tim Vickery says. Um, right. <clears throat> Something I wanted to bring up. 
These are the stats from yesterday's game. And total shots, 17. Forest had 13, so we didn't dominate like the play. On target was almost the same number of shots, but a lot more passes than them. But then that's every game, and that's why we have more possession. So our possession is, you know, 64%. Sometimes it's 70%. Clear-cut chances was exactly the same. We had a lot more corners, though. So it's fair to say, when you look at chances, shots on target, big big chances, they, they were pretty much similar between us. So you could say we got a bit lucky. You could say that we were more clinical. But I looked at this. Um, I, I, I went through this yesterday as well on the show. When you look at the goals for, we're only 10 off the top. So if you replace Timo Werner with a someone that can score more goals or uh, maybe sign a striker that scores more goals, you can close the gap. So I don't think the goals for is a hard gap to close. The goals against, though, look, look at this. We are 21 goals conceded worse than the team that's first and 15 goals conceded worse than the teams in second and third place. And that is why we are 10 points behind the top three. It's the goals against. So I'm thinking, hold on a minute. We, we dominate possession. We, 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 we have more passes. If you've got the ball, the opposition can't score. We win the ball the most high up the pitch from turnovers. Why is our goals against so high? And when you look here, total shots, you're thinking, right, it's probably because we give the other team too many shots. And, and just looking at this game in isolation, Forrest had 13 shots against us. I went and looked at some other games, and guess what? We're not actually giving away a lot of shots. And when you look at this chart, these are the amount of shots each team's faced this season. Spurs are almost at the bottom. We are tied with Liverpool and Man City. So how is it we've conceded more than 15 goals in the teams we want to catch, but yet the amount of shots against us is the same as them? What, what's the problem? Where is it going wrong then? It doesn't make sense. When you look at the XG, the quality of chances we give away, guys, Nottingham Forest had a higher percentage chance of scoring goals than we did in the same game. So what I'm trying to say is this. We've got 15 to 20 goals conceded that we need to stop conceding, but it's not because we're giving away more shots. We're not. We're one of the best teams in the league at stopping teams from shooting against us. And that makes sense because we have so much possession. The opposition don't have as much of the ball to have as many shots against us. So it all makes sense. But the quality of chances that we give away are massive. We're giving away, when we give away chances, they're big chances. They're not edge of the box. They're not free kicks on the halfway line. They're chances you're supposed to put away. And when you look at that Nottingham Forest game, Look at, the, look at the stats for big chances. One, one, equal. Why are we giving away so many big chances? That's what needs to stop. What's your thinking on that, guys? Because for me, that is where the improvement needs to come. If we're going to reduce the amount of goals conceded, that will, that will eventually equate into more points. We need. We don't need to stop shots coming in on us. Of, of this chart shows you we're, we're one of the best in the league at it. It's the it's the quality of chances we give away. We we literally we literally say here's the ball. We're going to give you one chance. It's a penalty, or we're going to give you one chance. It's a four yard tap in. <laughs> Why? Listen, Why listen, is this happening? So it's it's a perfect example. You were talking about having a six yesterday. We complained about Basuma. I've complained for back-to-back -back games because of Basuma in the midfield, not tracking back. And and like I'll use the Luton game, for example. Where was everybody tracking back to help the defense? That's why the goal was scored so easily. It's the same thing 
in regards to this past game against um, Forrest, right? Those chances are pretty easy for the opposition because we don't make those shots difficult, right? Those attempts difficult because our, our midfield in regards to de defensive support is not there. They don't track back. Um, another reason, it has, it says, we're also, we're horrible at set pieces. We've been horrible. Last year, we were better. Um, we had, you know, that coach, you know, Conte's friend, you know, who passed away. Um, and, you know, we were better at set pieces and defending set pieces. Whereas this year, we're terrible. I fear when we play Arsenal, who's very good at set pieces, you know, when we play them. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I will say part of the reasons of why we give these big, easy chances is because our midfield does not support our defense. Well, it's funny, right? Because I went and had a look at um, a few games, just the highlights to try and see what kind of goals were given away. By the way, um, ZZG Rom, big up. He says the games against Arsenal Man City will sort the wheat from the chaff. I can't wait for them. A different subject, but yes, big games. They're always the exciting ones to watch. Totally agree. I watched a couple of the games. And Mari, what I noticed was, yes, we give away a lot of goals from set pieces, uh, but the biggest percentage of goals we've conceded don't come from set pieces, although it's significant. It's enough of a worry, like we've got to fix that. If we look at this goal here, the one we went through earlier, you're right. There is no protection for the back line from our midfielders. There's, they've got nothing. They're, they're left stranding. But see... Part of this, we could say, it's because we don't have a six that's good enough, and that, yeah. and I don't think any Spurs fan would disagree. But at the same time, but at the same time, going forward, well, I was going to say, why are we in such a position where the defence are left so exposed, where if the six is caught out or if the six doesn't quite get it right, we're literally in the mud. Surely there should be a bit more to the way we're set up. Like I look at. Some teams that squeeze the game and they compact. I look at other games, other teams that just low block. I look at other teams where in certain... You saw Arsenal. Arsenal have been one of the most attacking teams this season. They've scored the most goals in the league. Yet they went to the Etihad and they said, nah, low block, compact, we'll play counter-attack today. Or maybe they adapted in the game as the game moved. We wouldn't <coughs> do that. I, I, I think it's partly game management, Mari. And partly the six as well. I think we don't adapt to certain <coughs> moments Look, for me, of the game where we need to just change a little bit. Go on, go on again. For, for go. me, I'm going to break it really simple. For me, as well as the way we play, we should be converting more. But because we don't convert those chances, we're always subject to conceding. So if we had. The, the, the way we play should be been more beneficial to our forwards to convert chances. But we should be making chances and we should be converting a lot more because we're closer to goal the way we play further up the line. But we, because we don't do that and kill games off, we always leave games open to get concede. So, for me... Yeah, but Iggy, for we're me, scoring the goals. Look, we're scoring yeah, the goals. Yeah. We've got yeah. 65. We're not, we're not, we're not doing... No, no, it's not. It's not. It's not that. There's been many a games though that we should have been out of sight, as in that we should have seen the yeah, but, team should have uh, been on, dead. Let me, let me dead count on this. Let me count on this. Let me count on this. If we're in the final third and we don't score, losing possession in the final third, where the goal is, where you're saying we should score, losing possession there shouldn't mean the other team got the other end and no, scored. I agree. I agree. Listen, the defensively, we're naive. I've said this many a times. We're not set up. We don't have players that see danger because it's just the way that we've been set up to play. We don't have players that proactively... How can I say this? You've got six, seven, eight players that think about going forward. You've got to have that one. At least You guys mentioned the number six. You've got to have the number one, number six that's ignores, organised, talk about, also sees like, look, if we, we're exposed here right now, if we get on the ball, I'm looking where the danger is and there and it. So we set up. That's, that guy is supposed to be thinking about that. But we're not We're not built like that. We're not, we don't have a midfield that, a single midfielder in that, plays in that role, 
that thinks like that or anywhere inclined. It's only the two centre backs, only the two centre backs and a goalkeeper think about how we are defensively. Even the full backs are very attacking minded. So they're, they're much better going forwards than they are. And like you said, we said many a times, they're not even full backs. They're actually wing backs playing full backs. So they're not they're not that way inclined as well. So we do need you know, to do you know we haven't kept a clean sheet away from home since October. Yeah. And it's not because fact, we give away a lot of the chances. last time we kept a clean when's the time last time we kept a clean sheet at home? Luton scored against us. Forest scores against us. Palace scored against us. A lot of set pieces, though. Remember. A lot of set pieces. Yeah, remember. I, 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 I think we're too open. I, I think that the teams look at us and they, they see this big space behind and they think, if we can just win the ball here, and get into that space as quickly as possible. We've got them. And like you said earlier, Iggy, teams come to us, they all play the same weight. It's because they've because they're successes. They, they, they don't know they can succeed with those balls in the channels. Yeah. That, that they're getting so, in so, behind so our fullbacks. Should we adapt? Should we adapt? Or some people call it a plan B. Some people call it, should we be able to just go to a different style? In my problem, still, my problem is that we can see Even the same Pep sort. Of, and Arteta have adapted. They have yeah, adapted. we can see the same sort of goals. If you noticed it, they isolate the fullbacks or they engage. They get them and to we, engage. And we score, and, and we score and the same type behind. of goals as well. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, so maybe, maybe, may, may, maybe there's something there that we need to look at. Well, there's definitely something there we need to look at. But I, 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 I still have what Will said once in the, in the show that he said at the moment, the first season... George, you're right. I take won. it back. We won 4 nil away at Villa. Spot on. Yeah, good, I, good, I, I, good, think, good. I think... I think I remember something that Will said. He said, like, you know, the first season, he's trying to implement the way that he sees... He wants to absolutely yeah. make sure that every player knows exactly how he wants to play. And then the tweaks and stuff like that can happen in the second season. But right now, he wants to filter through... That's yeah, why he's not no, deviating from no it. One, I, no one has ever done it the way we're doing it. Every single game where success has come from it. Yeah, listen, I understand. But it's it's like we, we, we always said, even amongst ourselves here, we've always said that this season was... You know, it's it's it was a you know year one, and you know it was gonna it was it was gonna be like um, what's the word? Yeah, Iggy, Iggy, Murray, keep it real. His comment is right. Imagine we didn't have Vicario. We'd have conceded what another fifteen goals, twenty goals. <laughs> I, I said earlier on, for me, he, him and Van der Ven have been our best players. He's been amazing like this season as well, Vicario. And who would have thought it? it would be it would be as good as he is? Who would have thought it? Did we get lucky with him? Because we all wanted Raya, me included. I did say Vicario done well at Empoli, but I didn't see this Vicario. Yeah, we all now. got that wrong. Every We all got that one wrong. Yeah, fair yeah. play. But yeah, yeah. Vicario's we, 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 been we, amazing. We've, great we've, we've taken the L. We've taken the L on saying we should have got... We, we he needs to... Ray has been great, though. Ray has been bloody good at Arsenal, though. Just, oh, yeah, listen. Uh, he's been good. It's hard not to with a, with a defence that's conceded four goals all year. Arsenal have conceded four goals in 2024. Four. Sorry, it's the last home game, not away. The last home game was October. I was right, but I said away instead of home. We haven't kept a clean sheet at home since October. At home. These are things. We've got Arsenal to... Man City coming to us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> we're, 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 that, we're that team that we're going to score one more than them. That's, that's how we're built. We're built that way. Yeah, that's, we set up to score one more goal. More Guys, do you opponent. think Ange needs to adapt? Of course he does, and game. I think he will. I think he will. I think he will. I think we're going to see that more, more. I think we'll see more of that next season than it is this season. This season, he just he wanted to set the stall out very clear of how he wants us to play, and then the next season does it. All managers do it. All managers do it, especially if we if they've gone for a complete style. Uh, change, you know, a, a style of change of the way they play. We've come Murray, away we've, from a defensive sort of team to now a very attacking one. Murray, do you, do you agree with Iggy? Do you think we will change or do you think it's how we play, mate? It's who we are, mate. No, no. Um, I, I echo... It's what we do, mate. 
Nah, no, I think I think yeah. we'll get a balance. You got... what, what one? What one, mate? You you get you get this, then you get that, and then you're gonna get that. <laughs> remember what Will was not a, saying. Not a color, mate. <laughs> I remember what Will was saying that maybe because I, I was thinking about it, I was like, you know what? Will may be right that maybe this year, only this season is a season that he's gonna just focus on get his style of football, and then when he gets his players. Year two, year three, you're gonna see where he may tweak it to you know to a point of you know who he's playing almost kind of like you know what Arteta used as an example in his fifth season with the uh Arsenal. You saw how he ch- changed his style for that one game against City. That we hope that Andrew will say, Okay, you know what, I'm gonna tweak it a bit. I'm in the second year, third year of the Premier League. All right, I really see this team is gonna play like this, so let me do. Do a little tweak here and there, um, so no, I, I I agree with uh, Iggy on that point. I would hope so, um, of course, because there, he has to learn some lessons, you know, for the first season, and has to has to adjust in life. Everybody adjusts, adjust, you know. You're called to adjust from you know. Being to a doctor, to you know, be a politician, to being a manager, you have to be able to be flexible. It's not saying you, you don't give up what your bread and butter, your you know, gotcha, your philosophy, but there's always tweaks to your philosophy and how you do things. So you think we're gonna we're gonna adapt, mate? We're gonna adapt. Yeah. I don't think he'll give up completely what the way he sees football. I think he will make tweaks. I think he will learn take take the th- where where the, the the like anything, man. You review everything. You review the good, the bad, and the ugly, and then you try and work work with it. Yeah. Um, Faz says, despite the high line, we conceded two goals on the counter. Converted. Those are ones that have been converted. Is... We'll find out. We'll find out whether we adapt. Uh, I don't see any changes this season. If anything, it'll be next season where it begins to change up a bit. There is um, there is one other thing that I wanted to uh, very, very quickly. Not We won't spend much time on this, and then we'll wrap up the show, guys. We've been going for two hours. Make sure you smash a like, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, guys. We've got 600 people watching at the moment across Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and X. You can find us on all those platforms. Massive respect to you. So... A couple of weeks ago, we did a prediction with 10 games to go, what Man United, Aston Villa and Tottenham would do. And we put the starting points and then we went through each 10 games, each one of those three clubs had to play and said, is it three points win, one point draw, zero points for a loss? This is what we predicted. And this is what's actually happened so far. So the chart with all the points, that's what we predicted. And guess what? We The, 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 the first three games, we've predicted all the Tottenham ones correctly. We got the Aston Villa one wrong only by one game. We said they'd beat Brentford, they drew. And the Man United one, uh, we've got that wrong in two games. Well, all three, actually. We said they'd beat Brentford, they drew. We said they'd draw with Chelsea, they lost. We said they'd lose to Liverpool, they drew. So the Man United one, we're in the mud. The Aston Villa one, we're almost right. But the Tottenham one, so far, we're bang on the money. Spot on. If we keep up the predictions for Spurs with what Villa's done, we will get top four by five or six points. So it will be clear, clear. But there's some big games coming up now. Villa have got to go to Arsenal. Spurs have got Newcastle. Uh, then, we've, then we've got Arsenal. Villa have got, I think, Chelsea coming up soon. Guys, we spoke about it earlier. Man United are out of it. They're not getting fifth or... They're not getting Champions League. It's between Spurs and Villa. Villa have also yeah. got Europe coming up. They're going to have to rotate. They're going to be tired. Spurs are in the hot seat. I expect us to get it. We've got Newcastle this weekend, Sunday. Um, sorry, Saturday. Myself, Iggy and JP are going to the game. Proper Tottenham away. We're going to get loads of match day coverage for you. The late night show this week, guys, isn't going to be straight after the game. I'm going to do it on the Sunday because by the time I get back, it'll be midnight. I'm going to be knackered. So I'm going to do it on Sunday. We'll do a Sunday show for that one. But... Guys, what are you expecting? Newcastle have found a bit of form. That comeback against West Ham, they got lucky at Wolves with that decision. That that was it. West Ham with the VAR decision. It was West Ham. But I, I'm sure you. Oh, let me get the table up. I'm talking. I'm waffling. 
I'm waffling. Let me stop waffling. If we get the table up, uh, let's have a look. I think we'd, 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 with Aston Villa playing Arsenal, the probability of Arsenal winning are far greater than Villa winning. So we've got an opportunity to try and distance ourselves by winning at, at, at Newcastle, which is no easy feat. But I think if we can win there, we'll go on 63 points and go three points clear with a game in hand on Aston Villa, should they lose against Arsenal. It's a big opportunity for us, man. Um, Newcastle, let's, what's their, whoops, well done. I just want to look at Newcastle's recent form. Hey. Uh, so Newcastle recently, they beat West Ham 4-3. They drew with Everton 1-1. They beat Fulham away 1-0, which is a massive result. We got battered there. For, for Newcastle were going into this with a little bit of form. They beat Wolves 3-0 as well a couple of weeks ago. Oh, they got lucky against West Ham. West Ham threw that away, didn't they? Yeah, but the but St. James's, they had the fans behind them. Yeah, yeah, listen. Behind them. The, game, the game at home or on the road? Uh, no, it's St. James's. They beat West Ham. West Ham were 3-1 up and then... Newcastle, they won right and, Newcastle got, and Newcastle got a lot of injuries in that game and they still managed to get a win. Hmm. It is a one-off game, though. I mean, um, look, uh, Newcastle have got something to play for, guys. They, they've got a chance of getting in Europa Cup. They're not going to go into this game. Yeah, we've got nothing to play the for. The only they, thing I'll say really still, the, the only thing I'll say, as, as good as St. James's is in terms of the crowd factor, they're really up for it. I think the way they play may also help suit us in the way we play. So it's going to be a good game, I believe. I think it's going to be a really good game. I yeah. think it's going to be shit loads of goals. It'll be like three, two. Yeah, it's going to be goals, goals. Yeah, I see. That. What are you, what are you, what are you guys predicting then? Forget clean sheet on this one. <laughs> Forget clean, clean sheets. Sheet. We, we, yeah. we could, we uh, could, we could, we could play a, a semi-pro team from Enfield Town, and we will concede the <laughs> goal. We'll, we'll score fifteen, but we'll, we'll concede one. <laughs> Yeah, Mari, go on. Sorry, bro. No, I mean, they, they got gregarious. We've really struggled um, with teams that have really a uh, good, you know, midfielder um, in there. You know, Polina one week and it's someone else the other. Um, um, oh, big up, Hass. Big up. I, I would say... I think I predicted us in this game. <sighs> Just so you know, Murray, oh, on, my... our, on, our predict, on our prediction chart, we, we well, I say we, the majority predicted a win. I oh, think my... I said, I, I think I predicted a loss, actually. Oh, gosh, and we have Isaac, and they missed some chips. It's going to probably be a draw. I'm, I'm going with a draw. 2-2. Two, two. Desmond, 2-2. Two, two. Desmond, 2-2. Two, two. Iggy? Yeah, I, I'll be more inclined to say draw, even though we did say win, anyway. Especially you, Mo. We'll just pop our chest out. We're going to go over there and win. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see a score, score draw. I, I think we have to do something big, man. We have to be... Uh, do you know what? I'm going to go for it, man. I'm going to say 3-2 Spurs. 3-2 to Spurs. <laughs> I score. I'm gonna go three two Spurs. I'll, I'll go um, two. Well, we've got no injuries. Touch wood. So we're not gonna lose because you know when 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 certain defenders start, we don't lose. I'm gonna go. Uh, I just don't like the way we play, man. <laughs> I'm gonna go three three. Three three. Wow. A lot of goals. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's gonna be it's gonna be like it's gonna be like the Man City away game. We're gonna get panned, they're not gonna take advantage, and then somehow it's just gonna open up and it's just gonna be tennis. Just <laughs> <laughs> three three. A lot of people are saying two two, two two seems quite a popular one. Three two. Yeah, I could see I could, I could see that. I could see a score draw. I could see. 
listen, man, I just want to have a good performance, a good game. If we can get a win, wicked. But even if we come away with a with a point, I do think Arsenal are going to beat Aston Villa. So that would give us a little bit of a, a little bit of a gap. In, t- in the grand scheme of things, in the grand scheme of things, I know what you're saying. What does it matter if we finish top four? I know a lot of people will say, what does it matter? Champions League. We're going to get top uh, four. Whatever. We are going to, I've said, uh, that's the one uh, thing I haven't flip-flopped on. We will get to, I've been saying it for months and months and months. We will get top four. It's just not my thing. It's not into it. Mm. It's not my vibe. People want people want Villa to beat Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they don't I'm care what we do at Newcastle as long as Villa beat Arsenal. <laughs> do I'll you tell know you what? what? If Villa get a draw, there. Emery if Villa get a draw, no, no, they're not going to beat Arsenal. Arsenal at home aren't losing to a draw. If they can shit house it, maybe a draw is the I best we know, can I hope don't for. Emery doesn't come or... across as being someone that sets them up like that. We'll see. We'll see. Be an interesting match, though. Really good. Verna game. to score a hat trick. Are you are you on the bumbles or are you on are you on the happy tablets, uh, Laurie? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Fifty to one. That's not bad odds. It's not oh gonna happen. Oh my though, god! Is it? <laughs> Save your quid, Stel. Save your one pound. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not, not. Don't worry about it. Four, four, five, four. That. I don't think I can sit in the stands watching that. I'll, I'll, it's, it's too much stress. Um, well, all right, story. cool guys. Listen, as always, thank you all for watching the show tonight. God bless you all, as always. Uh, I had a couple of super chats tonight from Dietrich, Gmars, ZZ Grom, and Faz Radfar. Big up to you guys, everyone in the chat that's contributed. We've tried to go for as many of your comments as we can. Big up to you guys. The Murray, are you doing a show this week? No, I will be going to uh. Costa Rica on um, Thursday, uh, but we're going to Newcastle. Here. My man's going to Costa Rica. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go freeze our asses off up north. But I will be hanging out. And there's you two lapping it up. You're, you're gonna go to South America with the sexy <laughs> you know I mean? We're going up north where people don't don't speak right. <laughs> Bye, man. We'll be hanging Thank out. You. Thank you, man. Tomorrow night, I will be having a pint uh, a Welsh? with a very special person close to Stell's heart. I'll be hanging out with your boy. He's in my town, in my hometown, in, in Orlando. My boy? You're, okay, you're taking the piss then. Um, it's got to be someone who I cuss. Who do I cuss? Timo Werner's uh, not coming to Ar- America. Ar- Ar- he's, a, he's, a, he's a gooner. So I'll be watching uh, the Bayern. Stefan? And- no. g are you meet up with GJ? Yeah, we're going to meet up tomorrow. <laughs> oh, get out of here. Yeah, no, we're going to meet up. Oh, yeah, yeah. You did a cruise. You went on a cruise in the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. The cruise is leaving. What, did, they, did, did he contact you or you contacted him? I, I saw his story. I'm like, yo, you're, you're in my town. Went to an Orlando Magic game, NBA game. So so I'm going to, I said, yo, you, how long are you in my town? He said, all week. I said, well, I'm leaving Wednesday night to fly out So to Costa Rica. So I said, Tomorrow we can recap the uh, Bayern uh, go go Bayern Harry Kane hat trick um, Bayern Arsenal. Oh, game. Okay, perfect timing, perfect yeah. timing as well. Oh my! Oh no, it could be um, good send me a Mari, send me a video. What's that video, man? When you're together? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Do a video together. Do a video together on, on that. Yeah, put it on the channel. Yeah. Hundred percent. We want to. We all want to see that. We want to see what the weather's like in Costa Rica. I want to hear about football when there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I will definitely uh, call in from Costa Rica. Definitely. We'll, cool. we'll send. We'll send. We'll send you a video from the beaches in Newcastle. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah Mari, Look, this is what Lucas saying. Give, give him hell, Mari. Oh, Mari. oh yeah, yeah give him hell, man. Bayern wins tomorrow. Oh, I'm giving him hell. <laughs> If Saka has a bad game, oh man! Um, if Bayern wins tomorrow, oh boy, I might even get on the plane and come out there. No. <laughs> thank you, boys. Great show, guys. Thank you as well. Big up to all you, DJ Marcus. Nice throwing this good right big up, end. big up, Marcus. <laughs> of course. For oh, one. Well, I said for what? <laughs> yeah, he's a gooner. <laughs> 
DJ Marcus. A lot of football. A lot, lot, lot of big football matches coming up, man. Mm-hmm. All, All right, right guys. Man yeah, this week, some big European games, so we'll just sit there watching. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do. The brides, man, never the bride. Just sitting there watching other people getting at it. It's like at a party where we're outside. We can see the club. Everyone's having a party, and we're outside freezing our asses off, waving at everyone. <laughs> yeah, watching. Yeah, making yeah notes. just watching. Yeah, watching. Um, just watching. Our next show is on Friday. Check it out. Myself, Matt Coppin. And young Charlie will be on the show of us as well for that one. Big up to Charlie from Holland. Uh, Holland. RIP Joe Kinnear. One last time, RIP. Yeah, Charlie, he's a Spurs fan, but he lives in Holland. His mum and dad are one, one's English, one's Dutch. So nice. he's out in Holland. He was, te- he was telling us about Van der Ven and stuff before he went to Wolfsburg. And, uh, yeah. Ask him for more if there's any more up and coming uh, young Dutch players. Be interested to know. Sorry, guys, I can't hear you because my phone just rang. It's disconnected this. So I'm just going to end the show. I can't hear anyone. <laughs> guys, big up. And we will see you on Friday. Iggy might do some videos during the week if anything comes up. But otherwise, yeah, we're out of here. Peace. Smash a like, subscribe. Come on, Have a good Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, Come Spurs. Spurs. The first game we look for, Robbie. For Robbie. Away. Where we got top them away? Top them away. Top them away. Where we got top them away?